River Rats, you are listening to the River Certified Podcast with Spencer Bow and Ryan Tassler and an array of guests where we cover the fun, interesting, and sometimes rugged parts of spending life on or near the water. So I, we saw you guys a couple weeks ago. Yes, sir. Johnson Bait and Tackle. Have either one of you caught a 100-pound fish since then? Well, this night. No. no. One of us has <laughs> caught two 100-pound no. no. fish no. since then. <laughs> but let's, let's start it with like... Um, let's start when I'm at work and Spencer always sends me pictures and I know it's a fish that's going to make me say, F you, Spencer. <laughs> and he was right on key. Let's, let, we'll get into that. Let's, <laughs> let's start with like a, a fun, debatable, discussionable, if that's the word, question. <laughs> this one's from Old Kentucky Larry. Nice. And he does... Did we say... He does wear bibs. He does. Okay. Yeah, he he made sure to to let us know that <laughs> with no bibs. shirt underneath. I I just assume. Prefer, <laughs> preferably. Preferably. I mean, in my mind, yes. <laughs> but he says, if underwater trail cameras were a thing, would you use them? Underwater trail cameras. You know, like a like a deer trail yeah, camera that you yeah. could set up. Yeah. You could, so basically, and, well, like that's kind of what diddy poles are. Kinda. I mean, it, it's the same premise, but yeah. not the same thing. Yeah. You think it's cheating or something? Or I mean, you could view it as cheating. You could. He, some be, people say sonar is cheating. That's, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Because, that would be a lot of knowledge. Yeah, I mean, like, think about this when you fish came by this spot at this time, and you could like these were the conditions. Them, yes. like, these were the conditions. This is what. Think about how on. much you learn on an under just a generic underwater camera that you drop down ice fishing or whatever. Mm -hmm. and you just learn so much more about fish behavior if you could set up a camera trap. Isn't well, that what the scientists call it? That's, they call that would be like literally being at four different spots at the same time, learning from each spot. Yeah. Are we assuming the water is clear enough to see? Yeah. Anything? Let's just assume you'd yeah. see whatever you need to see. If you could do all that, would you use them? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think I would. I absolutely would. Yeah. I mean, ethics aside, yeah. like, <laughs> it, is it even an ethical thing though? Because like, when you're hunting and there's a trail camera, you don't have to entice that deer to do anything you just have to be present when it walks by if that fish is there at that time there's still no guarantees gonna doesn't eat. mean he's gonna eat exactly. I mean, think about how many times you see fish all over the sonar or on an underwater camera you drop a lure down and they look at it like suck it bro <laughs> not today <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well this guy could tell you first hand well, experience the yeah, with the live scope yeah and, and the camera he's got the live scope and the camera at the same time when he's ice fishing and plenty of excuses i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> but, uh they just don't want to hit my shit yeah. so i guess they ain't dieting today yeah, they're full they're full uh um i'm here with kit and grandy they're with the beer fish fanatics podcast and ryan the flight assassin passing <laughs> um, i'm with nothing <laughs> you're with, you're Zero. With Tassler Guide Service. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short, man. I got a few uh, good, you might be river certified ones in. Nice. This is from Dan, who's pretty consistent with them, and he has some good ones. If you've ever been turtled so much you suffer from erectile dysfunction, you might be <laughs> river certified. <laughs> Uh, Steven goes, you might be river certified if you've ever used fishing line as dental floss, which apparently happened to him two times in the last week or something like that. <laughs> I've never felt like I needed a floss so bad when I was fishing. fishing. I, right. I must have bad dental hygiene because I've never, never done that. Unless you're eating jerky. I guess I could see that if it gets annoying, if it's stuck. Yeah. You and, know. and that would be another pro for braid versus my... <laughs> 80 pound test yeah <laughs> that's true yeah, nano fill kind of re reminds me of floss it really does yeah. Yeah. whatever that coating is or whatever it, yeah it reminds me a lot of floss i'd floss with like it. the real crappy low end floss that yeah. cuts the crap out of your your gums <laughs> yeah yeah the blood lets you know it's working <laughs> <laughs> um just some business on my end i i'll be in florida i'll be running guide trips down there down uh, on the Apalachicola river and i currently have four openings left so if anybody's like wanting to get in on that I'm and not... you're hammering big blues you got stripers you got hybrid stripers. hybrid stripers those are the three big ones there's an outside shot at some flatheads and we Maybe. could go brim fishing with like everybody else down there that i mean the cats don't the get... red ears Red ears. I think fish. they do have they big old red there? ears down there, but that's what everybody like four pound fish. I don't think they get. They're not like the Arizona they're not ones. That big. But uh, 
that's all anybody fishes for down there. Well, that's those, good. those and bass. It's good bait. So let's just leave it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and, except if you come fish with me. I'm sure there's a few people catching. What about some gar? Is there any big gar? Oh, down dude, there? the long noses get enormous. They, and they actually fight. Like the short noses that we have, they, mm-hmm. they kind of fight like a walleye lots of times. You reel them in and they just shake their head back and forth. Yeah. The long noses, they'll go on runs, they'll jump. Like on those, uh, the Whisker Seeker cat and carp spinning rods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had one, he's probably about 40, 42 inches long, and he busted at least 20, 30 feet off. Damn. Well, that's big time. In, in, yeah. in the holder. <laughs> wow. And then when I lift it up, I mean, hooking them is the hardest part. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, not with those, I guess. I had, you got to fight them too, but but you got to hook him. He was hooked good with a circle hook. And as soon as I pulled up after that run, he erupted out of the water, shaking his head back and forth. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty, pretty badass. So, oh, and Bowfin, they got Bowfin down there. Mm. First time I'd ever seen one of them. They fight really good too. Really? I thought we had another hybrid pulled off a bunch of drag and stuff and nope. Out Bowfin. popped the old uh, dogfish. <laughs> so a lot cooler fish than what we got pretty much. I mean, they don't have walleyes. I think walleyes are sweet. Uh, they don't have northern. I'll take tide. a sixty instead of a walleye any day. <laughs> yeah, I, I would yeah. Make that trade. <laughs> yeah. To me, the the bigger substitute is the striper for the walleye. Yeah, I Ooh. will take a a, a fresh water. Well, I guess they're ocean run. Ocean yeah. run. They're ocean the run. only Gulf strain ocean run striped bass left. Them hmm. and the Okalocony, which is just fun to say. On top of there being stripers there. I'm a side note. Is it weird that Woody is licking like my leg where I've got poison ivy on it? It's only weird if you <laughs> think it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> is he trying to heal it? Is that he, the dog wisdom? I taught him that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't want to give him poison, poison ivy on his tongue. I don't think dogs can get poison ivy. Really? It, it's, it's been yeah. over a week, but yeah. still. Is it oozing? It's not oozing. It's not oozing, <laughs> but it's, That'd be gross. it's itchy as hell. Yeah, if he's <laughs> licking while it's oozing, that would be a little gross, man. All right, back to your Florida trip. <laughs> um, that's that's pretty much it. There's there's literally nothing to do but fish. Like it's kind of a dumpy town, dumpy area. It's just south of Lake Seminole, um, but the fishing is awesome. Yeah. And there's there's one restaurant that you can get one of the best ribeyes I've ever had for twenty two dollars with so you know a side and a salad. Yeah, and it's funny. All right, here here's the story behind that. I was craving Mexican food. And I was camping at the campground. I asked the, the director, supervisor, whatever, is there any place to get Mexican food around here? And he goes, well, Irina's is kind of like Mexican food. I'm like, uh, all right, I'll go check out. <laughs> Sounds I, very authentic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it was. It was something like Irina's. It might have yeah. been a different name. But I ended up walking in there, and it was a house that was remodeled, turned into a restaurant. And I look at their menu, there is nothing Mexican, Mexican. on this <laughs> at all. A taco burger, nothing? No. It was it was all it was super fancy. The, yeah. the cheapest thing was chicken breast, and that didn't sound very good. And then the, I saw a ribeye. I'm like, mm. ooh, ribeye it is. <laughs> Something I can't eat again for a Oh, long I didn't time. mean to rub that in. I know, that's all right. But it was really good and I'm probably gonna eat many more in my lifetime. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, appreciate that brother maybe even this week yeah <laughs> that was a dig on granny because yeah. he's fighting the gal i did give you a bunch of trulies oh boy yeah, yeah. thanks appreciate I, that yeah i had to dig deep to, you know to, <laughs> to convince myself to do that one it's a little rough i didn't even get a thank you did i say thank you no nope. i'll say thank uh, you I, just, I don't know i thought i said thank you but thank you you're welcome <laughs> Uh, here's here's one for you guys to think about. Would you rather catch a big fish? Yes. That, <laughs> that doesn't no. fight fight worth the shit, or a smaller fish that whoops your ass. Small fish that whoops my ass. That's personally. Well, that's easy for you to say because you only catch small fish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now that's got two answers. If I'm on a guide trip. I want the big fish that oh, doesn't fight. Yeah. And if I'm personal, I want the small fish that whoops my ass. Mm. Well, how small is the fish, too, though? It's... I don't know. Whatever you come up with in your head. Well, how big of a fish would it take to yeah. whip your ass? I've never met... Four-pound smallmouth? <laughs> <laughs> I had this talk with the, the guide when I was in Spain, how I'd never had a cat, hooked a catfish that whooped my ass. Oh. I've seen it. 
well, you were sleeping at the time. But still, <laughs> no. When you I gave say, him like a thirty-yard head start. No, when I when I say whoop my ass, I mean like make me physically hurt. Like I'm sore oh. the next day oh. because I had to go into this battle with this monstrous fish. Yeah, I've never. And there's only a handful of catfish that are going to push a guy like that. I don't think we have the water depth for one for that. Because even if we caught a hundred pound flathead out of our river. He doesn't have the room but to the, run. And they do have good endurance, but I mean, they're not saltwater fish. They're not that fast. They're powerful. They have good endurance. They're not that fast. They're not going to bust off a big run where you have to catch up all that line. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. like the bat, most of the battle is going to occur within 20, 30 feet of where you started, regardless of size on conventional catfish gear. Yeah, you know, you figure you're putting ten to fifteen pounds of drag on them. You get them up over that lip of the sandbar drop off, and they kind of feel <clears> like <throat> it's fight or flight, and then they start really giving it to you. Yeah, or even on yeah. the edge, like they yeah. touch sand, and they're like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's going to be tough to find it. Like you're saying, a fish around here that's going to make you sore the next day. There, there isn't one in the mid. Well, yeah. I've been sore maybe, getting to that fish, there that's but no never joke. from that's that a fish. Fact. <laughs> that's a fact. Oh. What if you caught a whole bunch of not so big fish do you ever get sore from doing that um i actually i had one time when i got on a good wiper bite like a really good wiper bite and white bass bite and they weren't giants by any means you're talking one to four pound fish Mm -hmm. but it was every cast Mm. for like four hours (laughs) dang it my yeah (laughs) my right arm was elbow was a little bit sore (laughs) a little tendonitis kicking in yeah it kind of felt like i played a baseball game not pitched but just played a baseball (laughs) game the the day before yeah my my forearm has been sore after catching so many hybrids in a day you like recently yeah like good you've been pounding them I've been doing all right. I, didn't, I saw you put out a podcast, good. saw the subject matter, haven't listened to it yet. So I just assumed you guys had been on them. Yeah, I've been on them pretty good. What have, what have they been hitting on? Certified swimmers. Oh. <laughs> like, like legit, like for real. How convenient. Like Yeah, like seriously. I mean, top water too, but mm-hmm. yeah. I just, seeing them hit a top water is fun, but I'm more consistent throwing a, a jig, a and swim bait. Feeling that. Thorn. Yeah, I yeah. freaking love that. Yeah. I was, you know, the funny thing about certified swimmer. I think there was this past week, and we we just got back from a trip, and I was, I think I was talking shit about the certified swimmer, and <laughs> while I was reeling it in, I was like, man, this ain't catching me shit. <laughs> I'll say, I literally said that, and then wham, one second later, <laughs> bam. I'm oh, like, oh. It, it, I think I I think we were recording that too. God, you guys are that. awesome free advertisers. <laughs> I appreciate the hell out of you guys. But I, but I was like, dude, I was several casts before that. I was like, man, this ain't catching me shit, kid. And then Usually you know. it's the Indian, not the arrow. <laughs> I don't know how PC that term is, but I've heard it my whole life, and we're going to roll touché, with it. Touche, touche. Southern Iowa will bring that. Yes. <laughs> I grew up in Southern Iowa, a.k.a. Northern Missouri, a.k.a. the north of the south of the north. South of the north. Well, a little backstory. You haven't answered the question yet, oh. Kit. Uh, <laughs> we'll pass that along the table. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll take the smaller fish that fights hard. Okay. And For I haven't sure. answered that question either. Here, you just take that with you. Okay. <laughs> We're passing the, the beer along oh. the table because... It's too much, too much tem- temptation over there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not drinking any beers tonight because I drank all the beers last week. <laughs> Every beer in Spain. <laughs> Every beer in Spain. If you, if you go to Spain, just don't plan on drinking. There's nothing <laughs> left. Oof. I had help, but not a lot of help. <laughs> no, that's a lie. That's like, a lie. We, yeah. The, the people, it was uh, Will, Chris, Sam. Will and Chris went... I met them when I went to the Amazon. Uh, they like to drink. And then Sam's a giant who, whether he, he was a regular drinker or not, he's big enough, he's going to put him down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In case, in case of beer. Not. And, and he usually drinks Coors Light, so they go down like water. Yeah. yeah. yeah like a bush light. <laughs> pretty much. Sure. And I'm, I'm pretty much on the same page as everyone else. I'd take the smaller fish that fights harder. Okay. But I'd yeah. like that smaller fish that fights harder to be a giant small fish that just... Whoops my ass. Because, <laughs> I mean, it just depends on the species you're talking, you know. Exactly. Small bluefin tuna is only, like, 200 pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Not I do, bad. Not I would bad. like to get into them. Anyway, Kit, you were saying something. Uh, a little background with uh, why I was using those baits. Well, Scott, 
Yeah. I work with Scott at Drastic Plastic, so he sends me the certified swimmers. Right. So um, that's pretty much all the swim baits I'm using anyway. Scott's good, dude. Yeah. Scott's good, really dude. Good. And I'm catching a ton of fish on them. So they're they're nothing super duper crazy. They're just a minnow style swim bait that's got good action at slow speeds. It's got good action at faster speeds, so you can fish it all different levels of the water, like different speeds. I said speed a bunch of times, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it's just a good all-around bait that's going to catch a variety of different species in a variety of different conditions. Yeah. Did you see that other fish that I caught? Mm-mm. Uh, so I caught, a, I caught a striper this weekend. Yeah. Like and, a striper striper. Yeah, a striper striper. A real striper. Yeah. Oh, so now I know where you How was he going to see it? You never sent him the picture. Oh, I, well, I put in the... Uh, we have a little chat oh, for okay. drastic plastics. Oh, gotcha. I gotcha. turn notifications. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> that thing is constantly <laughs> going yeah, yeah. up. It is constantly going I, up. I'm, a, I'm part of five different group texts, and I turn the notifications off, <laughs> all of them, because it's like, you guys work jobs, right? You know, like, how do you have time to message each other this often? That's, yeah. I do not. At least but, not five of them. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, it was, it was a decent size. It was... Was it in a reservoir where they're fairly common or a reservoir where they're like almost unheard of, but they're there? It was at this tiny spillway. Oh, a spillway. So the pool was maybe a one casting distance, mm-hmm. the pool, and then it narrows down to maybe smaller than the street out, out there. Okay. Smaller than a two-lane blacktop. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it gets pretty narrow there. I caught it right in front of where... It gets narrow, and I'm just thinking it's going to be a, a big hybrid because mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't know there was going to be any stripers there. Mm-hmm. So the state we went to, they have stripers in there, but they don't typically stock that body of water. They will put the brood stock in there every now and then. So Did I'm, you catch a brooder? I think I caught a brooder. Nice. So, it's gotta be. <laughs> so how big was this thing? I think mid-30s to 40 inches. Yeah. Holy wow. shit. Out of this tiny, Bro. tiny spill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you, you caught like a tennis? twenty pound striper. You, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty darn close to that because I landed it for him. Yeah. That, does that make <laughs> does just, that make it like, larger when you land fish? Well, yeah. You can land fish for me then. <laughs> I, I, I had to. I, I think it's recorded. I had to lay down on my stomach and say I had to grab it with two hands again. Yeah, he was like, he was like, I, I think I got to grab it with two hands. I was like two hands. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then he picks it up. Oh, it's heavy. You're like, it can't be that heavy. Then when I finally grab it, okay. They're dense, man. <laughs> Dude. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So how do you think the fight of that fish compared to a big hybrid? Similar? Kind of similar, but I think just the fact that this fish was bigger, it yeah. fought harder. Do you harder. think they, well, I guess I'll just straight up ask you. Do you think if you hooked a similar size hybrid, the striper would fight harder or the hybrid would fight harder? Ooh. Pound now, this may have been a captive fish, though, that got released. So maybe... Well, he's only got one fish to go off of. I know, so, so but I'm, I'm not saying that's good comparison. I mean, what questions I mean, I ask? <laughs> if, if, like, how often is there really good comparison? If I beat the it's shit not, out of a lion in the zoo... It's not that science here. That doesn't <laughs> mean I'm going to beat the shit out of a lion. Sure, I get, I get what you're saying. <laughs> like a wild lion. <laughs> They're built different. Let the man answer the freaking <laughs> question. Okay. Well, this this little spillway it had some pretty decent current. They're they're letting out quite a bit of water for that size of spillway, but pound for pound, oh, man, I'm, I'm I might have to give it to the hybrid. That's my that's what I say. I, yeah. As pound for pound, I go with the hybrid. So the have la- you caught a twenty pound hybrid? No, I've caught a fifteen. But I've, I've caught close, I've caught plenty you? of ten pound stripers yeah. and ten pound hybrids to be able to compare them. And you give me that hybrid any time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they both pull hard. Yeah, I'm not going to bitch about catching one or the other. <laughs> no, but, yeah. absolutely yeah. not. But yeah, given the choice and they they had to be the same size, I'll take that hybrid. So that same body of water we went early summer, almost yeah, early summer this year. I caught. Oh, I didn't catch. A striper because I didn't land it on yeah. shore. It was you just hooked it. You didn't I, because catch he it. didn't land it for well, you. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. He wasn't there to land it. You're right on that. Yeah. It, in my defense, I wasn't there to land. Well, it. Well, and he was like, if Granny lands it, it gets bigger, so he can land his own fish. <laughs> <laughs> but I did say I, I did send my little nephew out into the water because it got stuck inside the tree, like about 10, 15 feet away, and he, he ended up losing it. The line broke. 
whatever. Wait, you sent him? You didn't just have him hold the rod and go get it yourself? <laughs> no, I sent him. <laughs> I mean, it was 23 foot yeah. deep yeah. right there, yeah. and the current was ripping. <laughs> and, and, and he's 15 I mean, years old. He's fine. Yeah. Sink, it's a sink or swim yeah. type deal. Exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. You know. um, They're but, still made of rubber at 15. They can bounce right back. <laughs> See, there that's, is that's, that's my thoughts exactly but they can't hold their breath any longer yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, the fish that i think uh that i would have landed if we landed it, it was a, probably about a 10 pounder so you put pretty, eyes pre- on it then. yeah we saw oh it was on the stomach it was oh. floating towards me because once he unhooked it i didn't know that the line snapped oh when he when he took it off the branch so the fish what i already fought it for like five to eight minutes already so you already killed him pretty well yeah it was on the stomach it's kind of floating towards me mm-hmm. and it was coming towards shore we did not know that the line snapped already and the next thing you know the fish <laughs> like hey i'm free and then we just saw it go, whoosh, whoosh, and it just went off mm-hmm. but we saw it It was about a 10 pounder and i've probably i think my biggest hybrid is around like eight pounds and i would say the eight, the eight pounds probably fought a little bit harder mm-hmm. i mean but well they call it the hybrid vigor like Enough people have come to this conclusion that there's a name for it, even. And I've, I've heard it play out or heard it explained with uh, blue cat channel cat hybrids, which aren't like a, a really a thing. They've been created in laboratory settings and stocked yeah. in some places. Do they but get big? They grow really fast, kind of like a hybrid yeah. <laughs> or hybrid striper. But um, they don't top out as high as a blue cat, but they get bigger in channel. Hmm. What and do they, they but call they, those? They get there really quick. Channel blue cat hybrids. I think. <laughs> How do you tell the Very difference? Very technical. Yeah. <laughs> Blanol. I don't like. I said it's it's it's, it's not a common thing. It, it's not a a thing that people stock and and I guess would you call it breed them, create them regularly? Yeah. 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 Huh. But yeah. I'm sure they wouldn't be able to reproduce like. Correct. Any hybrid. Correct. But it would be cool to catch one. It would. Yeah. Oh, did you listen to the podcast? You hear us talk to uh, Tyler Stubbs? Yep. I listen. You hear me talk about the albino channel cat swimming around? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's my, on my agenda tomorrow. You're oh. going after I'm okay. going after Awesome. Him. Okay. Like small awesome. po- small pond, right? Small yeah. pond that has more than one in it, so there's actually a real possibility that I might catch one. <laughs> that, that it shouldn't be in it, though. Correct? No, that's they, they put them in there. They, they stocked them. them. Yeah. The albino ones. Yeah. That group, they put them that in there. group of fish that they stocked had several albinos in it. How just cool. randomly, like they'll breed them, and the the hatchery just happened to ha- that get genetic them. just happened to pop out. Yeah, and play out a bunch of them. So. The one that fishing kit was that a true albino? You caught was it last year? Would you get a uh, blue cat? Was it blue the, cat? The blue cat, yeah, it was yeah. a blue cat. I don't think it was a true albino. It was all white, but it did not have pink eyes. It still had pigment in its eyes, really. But the body was total no white. black in it, or no blue black in it? at all. Total That's white, awesome. just like an albino. Was that down for, south? Yeah, down south. So is that is that that's the, the first one I've heard about that? Because usually we usually catch some pie balls down there, mm. and I've seen some. I usually balls. you mean we caught some. We caught one one time. <laughs> no, I, that trip that me, Rick, and Jay went down, we caught one. Oh, you did? Yep. Oh, so that would be. And I've seen online several from that. There fishery. is some about that fishery where it's just got oodles of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I saw. Well, I've never seen an all white one out of there. I haven't either. There was a, a picture of one. What's the cows that are black, like white? Holsteins. Holsteins. Oh. It looked like the, yeah. the way the blo- the black was on it looked just like a Holstein cow, but it was like 45 pounds. So, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it was kind of built like Holstein cow, I guess, <laughs> technically, too. What do you so think? how big was that white one? Tiny. Maybe yeah. three pounds. But yeah, I, I haven't caught a big one either. I just figured it was an albino since it was all white, and then people... Well, anytime you post something on the internet and say, this is a <laughs> the blah, 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 the in. expert They'll always fix you. Yeah. They'll fix you. If, if you, you didn't right know, away. if you didn't know before you posted, I knew it was not an albino. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you have a video take off on TikTok and you said like the scum of the earth came out and commented on it? Yeah. Uh, it was just me filleting a, a walleye yeah. and... I basically ignored. Just call all that the a Tuesday. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, <did. laughs> I mean that's what we did. Like, oh, you, I would have filleted 
10 walleyes in the same time you did or you're not supposed to cut this way or your knife's not sharp enough you need to sharpen it that's the thing that people say about my videos all the time like your knife is disgustingly dull <laughs> well no it's just disgusting in general it, is, it, it cut bait it cut no your jerky I have a for lunch. knife and i have a bait knife i don't even use my bait knife that much i use shears most yeah. of the time but uh it is pretty gross <laughs> No, actually, I kind of purposefully leave one of my knives kind of dull because what I find when you're flaying catfish, if you have a stupid sharp knife, like one that's really, really sharp, you'll cut through that skin when you're flaying out really easy. So I'll leave it a, a little bit duller and sure it's a little bit more annoying to cut around the bones and stuff. Mm -hmm. But once you have it completely flayed and flipped over, you don't have to worry as much about cutting through, through that through skin. That. That's true. Now, if you're, if you're flaying crappies and walleyes and stuff like that, you want a sharp knife. Electric knife at that point. I mean, I, I was on the electrical knife bandwagon. It's not a bandwagon. Like, there's solid reasons for it. <laughs> but I just, I kind of got away from it because, and granted, now there's cordless ones. There is. But I got away with it, or away from it because I would flay them at the place I caught them most of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, or, you know, you do a shore lunch, you're going to flay them right there. And I just got in the habit of flaying them there, even if I'm taking them home. Usually when I clean crappie, it's big numbers and there's it's no a group subs. of us yeah it's there's a group no of substitute us. Yes. for electric with crappies yes or when i go to lake erie cleaning all those walleye sure i mean it's unbelievable my, my favorite crappie cleaning story i was 12 years old me and my buddy becker went to this farm pond i'd caught a bunch of crappies and let them go at and I wanted somebody to enjoy the experience so I was like hey becker let's go pound on some crappies and we caught like we caught our limit we caught 25 a piece filled a five gallon bucket with them and then uh brought them home i'd never filleted a fish hardly in my whole life my dad wasn't gonna do it for me <laughs> we got to learn today yeah <laughs> so it was painful painstaking it took hours upon hours but we got them all filleted so out of 50 fish you got 10 fillets yeah <laughs> it wouldn't have been good but it gets worse uh we th instead of like throwing them in a ditch in the country or something like that. It was, I don't it had to be like the day after the garbage got oh, sent. Dumped. Mm. And I didn't tell my dad where I put them. And <laughs> I just dumped them in the, in the garbage. He thought my son's got more common sense than that. And I proved, <laughs> and I proved him wrong. <laughs> over and over again. Uh, <laughs> so he dumped them in there, and it was like four or five days later, and he said, what the... He didn't say hell. <laughs> um, <laughs> what the hell did you do? And I said, what are you talking about? And he grabs me and hauls me out by the trash can and opens it up and it smells as bad as you think. And I just remember looking down at this like false floor of maggots right <laughs> oh, on the bottom oh, of the dude. garbage can. And that was a good lesson learned. I didn't yeah. do that anymore. I would learned my lesson on that too. And not, not as bad, but what I do is uh, I just... Put you the don't catch in. very many fish. Yeah, that's so. true. That happens. <laughs> but <laughs> what, whatever, whatever, whatever. Just riding hard today. <laughs> whatever. Kit, kit you want to do another podcast? <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Kit donates yeah, fish. Whenever to I me, bring fish over, there you go. So we, we, we got to say it right here. Whenever kits, you I know, haven't even had a beer. Imagine how mean I'd be if I had a beer. Oh, <laughs> uh, because I have to fillet the fish with the kids and everything. I've actually been putting the fish carcasses in the deep freezer. And then, I, and then on a day before trash day, then yeah, I put that's it in the trash. smart. So I've, I've been realizing that's the way to do it. Yeah, I have a little bit of room to big deep freezer in the uh, garage. Yeah, so I just throw it in there for whenever doesn't stink. A day before garage or a trash day, just throw it in. See, awesome. that's one of my favorite parts of fall. You go catch a lemon wall, I just throw them in the trash can. Mm. They're not going to stink as bad because yeah. it, mm. it's not as hot. I was going to say the same thing about winter. Or winter. Yeah. Winter, yeah, for sure. Definitely more exaggerated in the winter. Yeah. You the, leave them out there for a week in the winter, it won't yeah. matter. Yeah. Well, that's one thing I do enjoy about ice fishing is you don't have to clean your fish right away. Yeah. you know. And I prefer not to. Really? I like to let them thaw. I bring them inside, let them thaw, and then I clean them. Oh, when they're frozen like you're solid, just saying, I, I like, hate filleting them. Yeah, I'm not a fan yeah. of that either. I, I meant like right away, right away. Yeah. Or keeping them in the hut. Like, that's typically what I would do. That that way they're not frozen when I'm flaying them. If I'm going to flay them that day, mm. just leave them in the hut. 
Yeah. And, but if uh, I'm not going to do that, then yeah, absolutely throw them out and let them freeze solid. It's kind of nice. Do you ever have them freeze out at the lake and you bring them home? Let them thaw in the sink, and they start flopping around again. I've heard that. I've I, never I, seen it, I but I've heard it. Um, I, I won't bring them inside. So, like, if, if I'm ice fishing, I either got to flay. Well, I, I've never thrown them outside the hut and brought them back for, to my house. Mm. Like, I'll only leave them in the hut, clean them right there. And then I guess the only other circumstance I've ever had was in somebody's heated garage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there was times where it was cold enough, even in the hut on the floor, the fish would freeze. Okay. And I'll bring them home afterwards and they're still frozen. I'll put them in the sink. Mm -hmm. I think, well, it only happens with bluegills, maybe crappies. Well, that's what I was going to ask what species. I bet a catfish would. I think, yeah, Yeah. I think catfish would too, but Mm -hmm. it's happened with me with bluegills for sure. Have you ever filleted a flathead? Oh, it's been a while since I've kept a flathead. All right. I had to just recently because my brother-in-law just donated that flathead that he caught the other day. And then he asked me, like, how do I, how do I cook this thing? <laughs> cook it like you would you any other, any other fish. fish. I, no, I wasn't <laughs> sure. Like, how do you fillet it? Because I wasn't sure if it had different structures. And he goes, just like any other fish yeah. you've done. They, any right. other catfish. Yeah. They yeah. are a different texture than channel cats or blue yes. cats. They're, like, squishier, fattier, retain more water. If you're going to fry them, I like cutting them in real small chunks. Okay. Um, you could fry a whole filet, but it's just mushy if, it, if it's too big. Yeah. But I like to grill them. If, I like blacking yeah. them. Blacking them is real good. I, but, cu- I cut them into like, uh, I would say, one and a half inch by one and a half inch squares. Yeah, that'd be yeah. perfect. Okay. That'd be just yeah. fine. Okay. And then if you, the smaller you go, the crispier it's going to be. Cool. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I, the reason I ask that is when you fillet flatheads and then you rinse them out in the sink, their their muscles are still twitching lots of times uh, and i've never seen another fish that does that yeah interesting yeah it's weird it's weird that is weird what do you guys or so this is a weird thing about me one of many I was gonna uh, say, we're gonna start that list huh? i <laughs> i very rarely remember my dreams and then yeah. the times i do remember my dreams i forget them really quickly like i'll wake up and try to like hold on to my memory of my dream and then it just kind of dissolves away as I wake up more. But I, so I've never had a dream about fishing that I can think of. Oh, I have for sure. Huh? Like I've, I've literally woke up in bed thinking my clicker's going off. Really? Like I reach, <laughs> I reach for my rod and I'm so pissed cause I'm in, I'm at home. <laughs> I'm like, God damn. Oh man, it was <laughs> only a dream. Yeah. You ever wake up thinking you're dreaming of a clicker, but it's actually a clicker? No, but you have. Because yes. I'm like, Spencer. <laughs> Spencer. <laughs> Get your ass up. <laughs> you know, just thinking about that, I don't think I've actually dreamt of me like in the middle of fishing. Yeah. Like it's hard for me to go to bed because I'm excited to go fishing. I keep thinking about it, you know, laying in bed. Yeah. But I don't think I've ever dreamt of me. I'm casting or anything yeah. like that. Thinking about it, I really haven't. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I've dreamt about fishing, but I can't think of any particular dream. Because yeah. I dream about work, which is the worst. Yeah. And then you, you got to go to work the next day. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, you feel man. like I never left. Yeah, my, I've been at work for 24 hours now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's happened, but I just can't think of any particular dream that stands out. One of the <clears throat> few dreams I remember, probably because it was so freaking weird, like how do you forget it? But I was, I had a dream where I was falling, which is not an uncommon dream, right? Mm-hmm. But as I was falling, I was kung fu fighting <laughs> midget pirates. <What? laughs> and I, you know, you can, what you've never dreamt that? <laughs> no, that, that would be a first. <laughs> They say dreams have meaning. I don't know what, what would that, that be. What, what Let's would analyze the, that dream. Be kung fu fighting? Yeah, I mean, like my, my version of karate in my mind. I'm sure it's not nothing like real karate, <laughs> <laughs> but it was. Uh, I was like, you know, throwing the high yah. <laughs> but there was it effective. They're... Were you dominating the midget pirates? Yeah, I was. Nice. I was sending them nice. flying. That would be bad in your own mind to be losing to midget pirates. Well, I mean, then it'd be. <laughs> would that be a nightmare then? 
I mean, well, and and I hate heights. Like, how many midget pirates were there? Like, Uh, was it concerning, or you're like, I got this? It was like six or seven, and it's my dream, so I I wasn't concerned. (laughs) In real, if it was real life, I probably would be. Did you do the twitch? Since you said you're scared of heights too. You I'll, I'll twitch in my sleep. You ever dream that you're falling off the bed or whatever that you, you just twitch? <laughs> I think I said this one on the podcast, but the worst twitch I ever had while I was asleep, I twitched and woke up and slammed my face into the wall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and was instantly pissed off because like, if somebody hits me in the nose, like, that's a trigger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> But that was not midget pirate related. I don't remember what dream <laughs> led to that one. So were you scared in that dream no, while you're fighting? No, I wasn't. So then that's not considered a nightmare, is it? So is that I, the prerequisite to I, nightmare? Like, like you could have a dream that you're being chased by this giant monster that's going to eat you, and if you're not scared, if you're not, under control, then I, yeah, I think so. I think you have to be like yeah. either scared or at least in fear of, oh, or something. I just remembered speaking of nightmares. The well, I, I said this story on here, but I don't know if you guys have heard of it heard it when i was in the amazon that malaria medication one of the side effects is night terrors oh shit yeah and i woke i i you wake up in the middle of the rainforest well (laughs) my that is real (laughs) that dream and i pretty much said like all like these are half of the dreams i remember yeah but this one i was laying on the rainforest floor in my dream and literally in real life pretty much i but in the dream, I was flat on the rainforest floor around damp leaves, and I could see the silhouette of the sun through the, the canopy, and there was droplets falling on me that I assume were water. And then one hit me in the forehead, and I wiped it off my forehead, and it was just blood. Ooh. And then I woke up. I'm like, that can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the meds. But Just don't look up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I woke up to somebody screaming. From I'm assuming a, a night terror of some sort. So wow. I, I, we'll go with that. For better or worse. <laughs> I mean, they were never seen again. <laughs> we'll just go with the nightmare. <laughs> for better or worse, I quit taking the malaria meds after that. I, yeah. Yeah. So when you heard the people screaming, was it how many people were with you guys? It was a group of ten. So it was one person in our group, and there were still ten afterwards. Okay, that's so. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's we're, good. We're just making sure odds are in your favor. Yeah. No, I've had a reoccurring dream like I'm laying in bed. I dream that I'm sleeping. And then someone like breaks in the house and I can't move. Oh, that happens. And then I wake up and I'm like, okay, is someone really in the house? (laughs) Oh, that would suck. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I get up and, you know, do a SWAT scan of the whole house and I'm like, okay, I'm just retarded. Yeah, dreams where you're where you're immobilized and you yes. can't move. Those, yes, I think those are one of the worst dreams. You Paralyzing, can have. See, yeah, I've never because you're one of those. literally like, I know I have to get up and protect, and I can't. can't. Yeah, yeah. Um, you then, feel kind of helpless. Yeah, yes. I hate that feeling. Yeah, thankfully I've never had a dream that I remember like that. But I've had moments where you feel helpless, and I hate that. Like when you're getting spooled by a big fish oh. <laughs> I feel freaking helpless you know it's like really cool but you're watching all the line leave your reel and you can't do anything about it yeah, that's a real life nightmare right there yeah. <laughs> it's really happened yeah dude no I had that tarpon that dumped me and then I had a shark that dumped all the line off my reel and then that might be it and they've both been pretty quick right oh yeah like, like not you didn't even get seconds. to enjoy it yeah. it just they were just gone yeah <laughs> and you're standing there with a rod, just huh? Have you, any of you guys been legit spooled? Like, had a fish take all the line off your reel? I did the, a couple weeks ago, but it wasn't a legit because <laughs> you had 40 feet yeah. of line on the reel. <laughs> <laughs> on on some ultralight stuff where I hook into a big fish. Yeah, yeah. smart thing would be just to let it break me off. Right, it's happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. same same thing. I, I think I it was probably like a carp. I had like a crappie setup. It took it off. And now that I think about it, I snagged what I think was a big head. I made a video of it that took all the line off my reel, but it was six pound test and it was heavy current. And the funny thing was my dad was there. He doesn't give a shit about fish. And I was like, <laughs> dad, I hooked this giant fish and is taking all the line off my reel. And he's like, oh, cool. Um, the Hawks are winning. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, how can you not be amazed by this? Right so now? both of those events are very uncommon. <laughs> <laughs> They're two and one. They, they are two. Are. There we go. They Against they a are. couple garbage yeah, teams. Yeah. The, is it two? I thought they're three and one. Or three and one. Yeah. So they yeah. garbage they, team. They yeah. actually looked decent last right. week when well, they were playing walkie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we shall see this Saturday, though. Yeah. Who, yeah, they, who do they have? I yeah. don't remember. I haven't, I haven't been following at all. They got Michigan coming in. Oh. Yeah. They'll probably win. It, it's a possibility. It's last too early in the well, season for the la, that. The la, no, they, <laughs> the, the, they'll probably, the defense will probably win the game. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, la, the last time uh, Michigan came in ranked top five, they lost to Iowa in the Kinnick. But I was much better at that time. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're probably as bad as we've been. Well, I say offensively, we. Offensively, <laughs> we've been really. As a team, Iowa's probably as bad as they've been for 15 years. Yeah. Iowa's offense is probably the, the worst uh Maybe in college football history. <laughs> hey, what kind of shirt are you wearing, Ryan? <laughs> well, I'm, I support ask, Iowa. Ask me but a I'm a question realist. and I'll sound the same way. I'm, I'm a realist. <laughs> oh, they, the Cubbies have been on a hot streak lately. Yeah, too little, too late. <laughs> <laughs> are they making a playoffs this year? Yeah, good one. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's, let's get back to fishing. <laughs> so, you, Spain. Oh, yeah. So let's dive into Spain. Yeah. Uh, I've been. I haven't talked to you since you got back. You haven't. Uh, and I, I want to hear the ins and outs because it sounded amazing. It uh, it, there was a lot to it. So it starts out. Well, we, I'll just, we have time. We have time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't work tomorrow. I got all the time. Oh yeah, he's off all week. <laughs> the travel was the travel parts sucked as much as I thought it would. We I had to leave here at four, so me me and Sam left here at my house at four to get to the airport. And then uh, in the air at six in Chicago by like quarter to eight. And then our next flight wasn't until 4.30 or five o'clock. So we, that's when the beers geez. began. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I did a little. I spent $212 at the airport. Well, I, I, was, <laughs> I was pretty tame because I didn't want to spend $15 a beer yeah. Yeah. in the airplane because once I get after it, it's hard to slow down sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you just get after. Not saying it for, there's a problem. <laughs> just uh, sometimes when I start, I just on this trip, I, it didn't end for like a week. <laughs> 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 but um, hopped on the plane. It was a nine-hour flight from Chicago to uh, Madrid. So we went from a nine-hour layover to like a nine-minute layover. So we're sprinting to get through customs, get to customs, and I'm supposed to grab my checked baggage because I took a rod tube with fishing rods and a bag with fishing stuff. And I didn't need to, um, thankfully the outfitter had equipment, but, um, we had nine minutes before a flight. So I run to the customer service desk and I said, do you know when the check bags are going to come through? And she said, well, probably not for another 10, 20 minutes. And I'm like, my flight leaves then. And she spoke, Spanish, and then I'm assuming English was her second language, and I'm not sure she entirely. But jackass came across clear as day. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this isn't what I wanted, lady. Okay. <laughs> she said that she rerouted them and sent them directly to Barcelona, where we were going to end up. And I'm like, okay, cool. So yeah. then I sprint to the next terminal and make the flight by like a few minutes. All's good. Fly to Barcelona, waiting for check. Well, we couldn't hardly find the check baggage, and I had to like sneak in and ask a security guard if he would not arrest me. Well, a security <laughs> guard, a police officer, if he would not arrest me because we went all the way around to the front entrance, somehow bypassed baggage. And then I had to go back through the do not enter doors <laughs> that were guarded by cops. But they let me through, and then I'm standing at the carousel just waiting and waiting and waiting. And nothing shows up. So I go to the customer service desk there. And that was an hour and a half debacle trying to overcome the language barrier. Oh, oh dude. Yeah. And it's weird. That's like, why I don't like to go overseas. Well, I was basically illiterate. Yes. So yeah. I'm. Yes. I didn't, couldn't read any of the signs. And hell, like, <laughs> Will. He he's Mexican, like he speaks fluent Spanish, but it's a different dialect. Different, like yes. he even struggled over there. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm at the, that desk 
filing a claim and think I kind of get it processed. Will shows up and he's like, what are you doing? I said, I lost all my luggage. <laughs> and he went over there and checked one more time, found my bag. Oh. Rod tube's still missing. Rod tube is still missing today. Like, I don't oh, know what's that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. But um, oh. I got, like, it had my tripod in it. It had my camera, like, chest mount. <sighs> had all my reels, a bunch of lures and stuff in the bag that we did get back. So, oh, okay. wow. so that was wow. good. Um, but and, like all the prototypes are in, is that what you took for? No, oh. I took uh, two nine and a half foot heavies bait casters, which would have been perfect. Mm. Yeah. So it was a real bummer that it didn't work out. And then I also, the fact that I just purchased $180 in fishing line to put on those two reels just for this trip. So yeah. if anybody needs like some hundred pound power pro, <laughs> I know a guy, I know a guy who's got about 1500 yards of it. Jeez. <laughs> Dude. Oh, but anyway, so that was the beginning of the trip. Downfall of being a braid guy. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is quite a bit more expensive. And as long as you don't lose it, uh, you know, traveling then yeah it, it does last a while uh, it does so there's that there is that but we rented a car we had a three hour drive from there to caspe spain which is basically the bfe version of spain like we were in the middle of that's where i would think hundred pound fish live right i would be upset if they're right downtown <laughs> <laughs> i think it'd be cool if they were though like I, I well think, they are in certain parts of the u.s I right guess. that's what i'm yeah. saying like those are kind of badass scenarios yeah but this one wasn't like that so we we get there or wore out uh chris has a, a pretty entertaining picture of me passed out on sam's shoulder like <laughs> my mouth just hanging open. <laughs> um, so that was like the only real nap I got on the way there in 30 hours. So jet lag wasn't a real issue because I just didn't go to sleep. And by the time the sun went down, we were all exhausted and, you know, had no problem passing out and waking yeah. up the next morning. So that part worked out pretty good. We checked out a tackle shop. That was they had some weird ass lures, man. Like they, they had some stuff. There was no Johnson bait and tackle, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> they had swim baits that were like twelve inches long. Wow. Wow. And you Jeez. know you know the old school sassy shad looking ones with the tall, thick bodies and the giant tails? Yeah. Yeah. Twelve inch versions of those. Wow. It was pretty cool. And you then know, they had this 15 one fifteen knot. <laughs> I don't even know what you put on this freaking thing. We had a lure that looked like a jack o lantern. Like it had a face painted on it and a little skirt. And I don't remember what the body, I think there was a, a big twister tail on it. But yeah, there's some weird stuff. And then they had all the pellets, you know, the chum, the carp chum pellets yeah. and stuff like that. And they and had. You hammered the carp. You had some hogs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll let the surprise out on this medium because. <clears throat> Like, everybody who listens to this has to be cool, right? <laughs> but I, I, every single carp we caught, not every single one, every one but two was the biggest carp I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Oh, jeez. <laughs> jeez. He was sending me pictures. I'm like, that doesn't even look real. I, I caught... Oh, wait, they're giant. I caught the biggest and the smallest. <laughs> so I think the smallest one was maybe 12 pounds. The biggest one was 40. 40 pound, 40 carp. pound carp. <laughs> Holy. Like and it common? wasn't like mine was the biggest yeah. by a lot either. You know, Chris caught a 39. So <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. there were just oodles of them between 25 and 35 pounds. And then you got a few on the top end, a few on the lower end. Huh. But it, that part was probably the most impressive part of the whole fishery. Like really, if you think about it, cause you don't have Wells catfish everywhere. Uh -huh. So I don't know. I have a lot more experience with carp than I do Wells catfish. <laughs> and you don't see 40 pound carp around here. No. no. Although this trip did make me wonder because <clears throat> like all the carp I catch are in shallow, muddy water, right? Yeah. Creeks. Yeah. And I, I wonder if that's where the little fellas hang out because we are catching all these carp in like 35 feet of water in huh. the main channel. So if you were to go to say one of our reservoirs, chum it up with a bunch of carp chum if you could start 
hooking into If you those. could afford it. And wasn't that the most expensive part of your trip? Oh, uh, not the most expensive, but it was surprisingly expensive. <laughs> like, Spain is so freaking cheap. I had a, I think it was a sirloin, side salad, these really nice potatoes, like fancy potatoes, three beers, 22 bucks. Hmm. It's like, Hell a, yeah. it's like a 10 or 12 ounce sirloin. And that's just a dinner. You know, every dinner was like that. The uh, cost for the outfitter was dirt cheap. Lodging is dirt cheap. Beers were cheap. Also part of the reason I'm not drinking beers right now. <laughs> <laughs> Took advantage. Yeah, yeah. But, but the bait the bait was, I don't know, like 30 bucks a bag or f- something like that. We'd go through two of them, three of them a day. <laughs> granted, but was that split up between? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But granted, too, we were chumming hard for cats. Mm. Like if you yeah. were carp chumming, you wouldn't go through that much. And you wouldn't go through much of the bait pellets either. And you couldn't use live bait or dead bait there. You could only use lures, prepared bait, or like night crawlers. Oh, so really? no yeah. live bait at what, all. What's no. the reason behind that? Do you know? I'm a, I, I don't know. I would assume it has something to do with invasives because mm. literally that entire reservoir is just invasive species at this point in time. <laughs> like the, <laughs> the Wells catfish aren't native. The Xander there aren't native. Everything's uh, dead that was once there. Yeah. <laughs> I think they have largemouth in there. Really? And, it, and if you see it, like seeing it in person, it's easy to imagine there being just piles of largemouth because yeah. you have this super defined creek channel, and then off to the side of that creek channel is just standing timber everywhere. <laughs> it just looks like largemouth factory. So you have 40 pound carp, do you got 20 pound largemouth? Maybe. <laughs> I fish for them as much there as I do at home. So, I, <laughs> if I'd have caught wind of a 20, ma- 20 pound largemouth, I probably would have spent a little time. After they, them. they, what I really wanted to do was the Xander fishing. I was yeah. going to ask, did you see any Xander? I saw one guy catch one on a giant telescoping cane pole who was fishing next to us, and our guide was yelling at him <laughs> so, <laughs> for being too close. I don't know what a Xander is. What's so, a Xander? Basically, a European walleye. Yeah, is they're, they get huge. Well, you see, I thought that, and Sam corrected me because Sam knows everything, <laughs> uh, that the world records are about the same size. Really? Uh, yeah. Because I always assume Xander just were big. And maybe on average, they, they're bigger. They're bigger. I don't know. The guide said that the biggest one he ever saw was, I don't remember, some stupid number. Bigger than the world record. Hmm. And he said he caught that on a guide trip. Hmm. Wow. But I wanted to fish for those. Unfortunately, the rod I was going to use was in... Uh, Still. The, <laughs> Still probably in Spain. In limbo somewhere. Tra- transporting still. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're um, taking Whisker Seeker Worldwide. Yeah. <laughs> I hope somebody gets some use out of those. Well, and I just bought one of those two weeks ago. It was a, a seven foot medium power bait casting rod that I, I got basically for throwing top waters at hybrids. <clears throat> and I got to do that once. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked amazing. It was pretty sweet. <laughs> I even put the one of the reels I got off Garrett on it. Yeah. Yeah, it a sweet combo. Now, I, at least I have the real. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm... Yeah, if you're going to lose one of those two, it's better to lose the pole than the real. Oh, 100%. <laughs> With well, your situation. Well, anyway. anybody's situation. Like, those pen fathoms, they don't give those away. And I have yeah. two of them in there, plus two other reels. I mean, there's $1,000 in reels sitting in that yeah. reel case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's just the reels. You know, you'd think everything else is in the bag. I got the right... If the, I'm going to lose the right one, one got I, lost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't want to lose any, but my ratio isn't very good either. I, I think I've checked baggage three times my entire life and now have lost baggage. <laughs> <laughs> one out of those three times. But um, there's more to that story. We'll get to that. <laughs> the fishing was, uh, the, the mornings were really slow. Like we would catch a few. Is and then, that because of the beers? No. The night before. <laughs> <laughs> That morning does start till ten o'clock. Yeah, yeah. We missed the morning bite. That's every ice fishing trip I've ever been on. Yeah, we missed the or- the morning bite. We again. were there. We were there. The fish must have been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> they were the missing component. We made it. Uh, but I, for there was like the switch every single day. Like even the sl- like we had a few slower days. We had a few days we had more action. But about eleven o'clock, that's when you. St- 
cats would start showing up and more carp would start showing up. But after the first, the first day we pounded on a bunch of carp and some smaller cats. And then it's, you're like, we need to make a change. (laughs) That's essentially what happened. The guy's name was Steve. And I was like, Steve, how do you feel about taking these carp rods out of the spread and just doing all catfish? And he was very apprehensive. And I asked him later, I said, has anybody ever asked you to do that? And he's like, no, mate, because <laughs> he's from the UK. That's uh. probably a poor uh, imitation of the accent. I thought that was Australian. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're a British colony. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. same. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the ballpark, kind of. <laughs> Ish. Ish. But uh, he, he was just kind of flabbergasted that, at that idea that somebody would want to do that. I was kind of proud that Dumb we were the Americans. only ones. Well, <laughs> apparently, he doesn't have very many American clients. Yeah, which is kind of a surprise, you know. Yeah. yeah. What's the but deal? For that with... cheap for a big well? Well, they're all fish. cheap. Like yeah. he's not any cheaper than anyone one else. Yeah. Like they're all comparably priced, from what I found. Huh. I was going to say, what's the deal with Europe and carp? I I think of them as like the soccer version of a fish. You know, like they're, yeah. they're the most okay. popular thing worldwide, but nobody in the U S gives a shit about them, but they're slowly gaining traction. They just are like soccer. They yeah. are. Yeah. yeah. So everybody besides the U S likes carp. Mm-hmm. Well, they get big fast. They fight. Yes. There's a lot to like about them. Yeah. And I've, I've if dove you smoke into them, this... I've heard they're good. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I've dove into this topic on here a few times where I find like the fish I fish for, I think are interesting fish. They might not be the hardest fighting. They might not be the biggest, um, but I think they're cool as they are. Yeah. So carp kind of fall in the same category to me as like a sturgeon. Hmm. You know, they get big, they fight hard, but they're not the most interest. They don't live the most interesting lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be duped by corn. Yeah. <laughs> well, so the other side of that story, the other side of that story, is they're very opportunistic, which means. They have a leg up on other species just because they have a very broad niche. And that's why they take over. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's So true. they're in the same, like... Same with bullheads or... Channel anything. cats yeah. can even occupy... They're omnivorous. They'll eat a lot of different stuff. And apparently Wells catfish, too, because they'll... You would catch one, and we've been chumming with these pellets, and he would make mate, like, we call it the corn. He would boil corn, like, ferment it, and he had his own little concoction that he would mix in it. Hmm. <clears throat> and so you got a you, secret sauce. <laughs> well, <laughs> he had several secret sauces. So he'd take a bucket, two scoops of pellets, two scoops of this nasty ass smelling corn, throw it in the bucket. Every time he dropped a bait, he'd throw it in the water. And when you would catch a Wells, you'd look in his mouth. And his mouth would just be full of pellets and corn. And he's just <laughs> down there mowing it up. And just happened to find your bait. He just happened to scoop up the wrong one, bud. <laughs> but that was, I mean, chumming is such a big deal in Europe. And it's interesting how it's such a big deal there and not here. Yeah. You know, like, how many people do you know who chum for species that you could chum for? You could chum for channel cats and probably knock yeah. the piss out of them. But I knew a guy when I lived in Carroll. There was my next door neighbor was an elderly guy that had a boat Mm -hmm. and he would chum. He made a big garbage can full of chum every spring. Yeah. And then he'd go through it. What was his chum? It was started out like a rabbit food pellet and then he'd add certain things to it. Top secret yes. ingredients. Yes, it was you would have to die to know the recipe. Sure. But (laughs) that's how this guy was with this stuff too. Yeah, he would uh he would go through it all summer and then make a new batch the next spring. <laughs> that would work for ice fishing too, right? Chumming, I mean, I would it, think. If, if it's a species that would be attracted to what you put in the water, it stands to yeah, reason. Yeah, there's a whole market around that scenario. <coughs> you know, not only like the lights, but, you know, there is a chum. Fish attractant. Fish yeah. attractant. I thought yes. chum was illegal in Iowa. I'm know. not sure. I'm, I, it's kind I of don't a gray. do it, so I've never looked into it really. I know there are states where it's 100 percent legal, and there's mm-hmm. states where it's 100 percent illegal. Yeah, I don't even know where Iowa stands. I don't know either. I've never. We have to ask it. the Iowa DNR now. Yeah, one. we'll we'll ask the Iowa DNR about yeah. that one. Yeah. But down south, I, I check out the fishing reports down there, and for the channel cast, one of the 
techniques that they share is chumming with fermented Probably corn soybeans. or whatever. Yeah, soybean. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. I'm like, huh. I never even thought about yeah. that stuff, but it's more common than I guess people realize. Well, that see, that makes a lot of sense that a fish would be attracted to – an omnivorous fish would be attracted to something plant-based. What doesn't make any sense to me that I saw over there is – I don't think a fish enjoying spicy things, but the dude, he has his, his bait pellets, and then he makes this paste, and he puts paprika and cayenne pepper in the paste. So when you put, you have to like mold it around the bait, and when you do that, you make sure you wash your hands. And before you rub your eyes. Before you rub your eyes. Or, the bathroom. or, or take a leak. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, there's this guy I watch. He's from Iowa, but he... Fish is primarily for carp, so he's making all these prepared baits and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And one of his things is he puts sriracha into his mix. Really? Yeah. Really? So that kind of falls in line because there's ki- is there cayenne? That shit will go on anything. It's spicy. It's, it's spicy. some kind of pepper. It's yeah. Like pepper. Yeah. I was like, huh, that's weird. Sriracha. I get maybe they do like spicy. Well, when I walked through that bait shop. They had they all these different good with spicy. On. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I mean, I like spice. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the bait shop had all these prepared carp baits, right? And the flavors on them were super weird. There was one that said tutti frutti, like, <laughs> and then there was uh, strawberry, whatever. And then there was one, I don't think this was the flavor, maybe it was, but it was called Tiger Nuts. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that guy I watched, he uses Tiger Nuts yeah, too. Yeah, like that's Tiger. a thing for carp. Oh, yeah. Tiger nuts flavor? It's off a of plant, I think. You don't know what flavor that is? I <laughs> Sorry, guys. I think it's, like, it's easier to get them at the zoo than in the <laughs> wild. Oh, no. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> They're a lot tougher out in the wild. I think it's like Run a low grain on or tiger something. nuts, boys. I think so. Yeah, it's like it's, it's like a hard grain, kind of kind of like corn. Yeah, it's the weird. the guide brought it up, and apparently you have to go through this elaborate process, like processing procedure because if you don't do that and you use them they will actually poison the fish that eat them oh, really weird. yeah in some places outlaw it because enough dipshits don't do everything they need to do and are killing fish hmm. hard to imagine right yeah <laughs> but i mean you still caught them so. <laughs> why does it matter <laughs> uh, the rest of the trip kind of felt like groundhog day because you would wake up or I'd wake up, drink a cup of coffee, brush my teeth, hop in the vehicle, and we'd drive, I don't know, 15 minutes on gravel to this spot that felt... I mean, we drove through all these um, olive orchards. Yeah. And everybody was... There's all these olive orchard farmers doing their stuff, and we're driving... Like it was this, harvest season? I don't know. I mean, yeah. It had, well, I don't know what the seasons are like. Do they have a harvest season, or is it just like continuously picking them? They were getting after. Yeah. <laughs> we wind down this this gravel road. There was a, I don't know what do you, what do you call a farm that has sheep? Isn't there a name for that? A farm. A, a sheep farm. Sheep farm. Sheep farm? <laughs> I, I thought there was a different. I don't name. know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll come back to this. The first night we went out to dinner. Uh, we walked into this like cafe that just happened to serve food because we got there at like six thirty. None of the restaurants open till like eight. Jeez. They have siestas and like it, like businesses close from are closed from like one to three or one to four, so people can go home and take a nap. Yeah. Call it a siesta, and then people go back to work and then they go out to eat at like eight. Huh. We were there at six thirty. Nothing was open, but this one little cafe. <laughs> you look tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They, uh, so Will was trying to order cause he speaks some Spanish and he was having issues ordering and there's a few words on the menu that he didn't know. And the guy didn't know how to explain what it is to us. And he was like, so you're like, I am in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me that. <laughs> well, it's like point confidently. Yes. He was point, yes. Will was pointing at it and the guy was like trying to say words for that. He would understand. And he just. Basically quit and went, bah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and then he went and got a picture and it ended up being goat. Oh. Uh, <laughs> close enough. Yeah. yeah. It's close enough. That's what I ended up getting. It was pretty darn good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever think about using Google Translate? 
I thought about it, but I just wanted a beer. It was like oh, the okay. first night we were there. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you want just to tip your hand a couple times. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I got, got that across yeah. to him. No problem. I just pointed at the tap and was like, I'll take that. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> thumbs up, buddy. There is no barrier in beer <laughs> or fishing. Like the language yeah. of fishing runs deep. But uh, back to the sheep farm. Go by the sheep farm. Pull up on this pretty, I would call it a bluff. Well, it was kind of a cliff. We were on this cliff overlooking the lake, and then you walk about maybe 50 yards down the side of it. And that's where we fished. We fished on the side of a cliff. The, uh, it was all loose rock. Uh, I didn't fall, but I got really close <laughs> at least five or six. So it was down. a normal outing. Yeah. Well, this was over the course of a week. Uh, Chris ate shit at least twice that I caught on video. So <laughs> I'll be sure to like, you know, zoom in slow mo, a slow mo. <laughs> The weird thing was, you know, you see something that looks kind of sandy around here. You just assume you can walk on it, mm -hmm. right? It, there's the substrate is almost entirely rock and clay. If you assume the water dropped really, I mean, the water dropped probably like three feet, four feet while we were there. Wow! And as the and you still had good fishing. I mean, I don't know what good is. That's true. We caught the fish we wanted to catch. Uh, we yeah. caught lots of fish. We in. I mean, I thought it was a pretty good number of fish. But if, if it would drop three foot around here, you'd be like, I'm not even going fishing. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be dumb enough to try. But uh, the, as the water level fell, the substrate would dry out. But it was consistent right at the water's edge. You take one, one or two steps in the water, and you're like balls deep in mud. Yeah. Ooh. Like... I almost lost my Crocs a couple times. <laughs> Ended up just, if I'm going to get in the water with a fish, I got to ditch the Crocs. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, I, I thought we were going to lose him once. <laughs> Jeez. But it, it was weird. I'd well, if he's balls anything. deep, he's like four and a half, five foot. For real. Underneath For real. the water already. It was, it was <laughs> there, not every spot was quite like that, but there were a few that were somewhat concerning. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. if I was by myself, I would think, two or three times before I got in right there. Yeah. Gotcha. One weird thing about the wells. All right. So their pads are, Sam said they weren't as, they're, they're just like a flathead. He wore gloves the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody did. But, uh, I, the first one that got caught, I had to, I had to investigate. They're like 10 times worse than a flathead. Yeah. Oh. They're gnarly. They stick out way more. They're angled back. Like the the scuffy part on their pads, almost like teeth. So they're gonna grab and rip, and they will bite you. Uh -huh. It's weird. Like most <laughs> of the fish you reach for to land, won't bite you. They like try to get away. Yeah. The ones that I was landing, the wells that I landed, I would reach toward. There's one in particular. I reached towards his mouth, and he just bit the Bring shit it. out of me. <laughs> Bring it. Yeah. And then Warner. there was there was there was one I was trying to be gentle with, like let him go. And his head was angled towards the bank. So I kind of like pushed on his head to, to get him to go out. And he snapped at me. And I pulled my <laughs> hand back just in time. And like he got my finger somehow right there. Like there's still a little <laughs> scuff mark Dude. on the inside of my finger. But I've, I've never caught a fish that tried to bite me other than the shark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, that part, I don't know. It weirded me out. It kind of yeah. blew me away a little bit. Yeah. Little things that you don't think about. So you're not going swimming in Spain? I'd go swimming. <laughs> I don't know if they would attack you just out of the open, you know, unless they're captured, I think, you so, know, as a defense thing. Defense, yeah. I was yeah. going to say it's a yeah. defensive mechanism that is like... I don't think they're just come up and try to eat you. Although some of them are big enough. Kit, you might not want to swim in Spain. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, they made, a, they made a whole show over that that they do come yeah, after you. River yeah. monsters, right? They also <laughs> yeah. made a show about the catfish under the dam, Ryan. <laughs> 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 and then they went and caught like forty pound blue cats that would never eat a person <laughs> a long ass ways from a dam. But forty pounders will destroy your hands. I oh, can that's true. attest to that's that. That's true. But real talk, though, I wouldn't. I wouldn't let Woody swim around out there. Oh, dude. Yeah. And there. Well, tell them the size of fish that you've seen landed uh, on your trip. We caught four over hundred. Jeez. Uh, the I think they went. What did they go? Like one twelve. 
115, 123, 145. And Sam, 145 pound fish. Is that normal? That's like me. That's those are big fish. ones. They're okay, like, okay. they get up to like three bills. Don't yeah, they? Oh, like okay. a world yeah. record would be like 300. Okay. So to catch one, you know, if you go look at percentages of compared to the world record, you know, like 100 pounder would be a third. So that'd be like catching a 28 pound flathead. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 100 pounds makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Nice solid fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, that one's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's only six and a half feet long. Not bad. Well, <laughs> Sam caught the biggest one, and I was pretty happy that he finally caught a fish that he could hold up and not make look small. <laughs> <laughs> 145. 145. 145. Real talk. It was longer than Sam is tall. It was seven over seven feet long. Dude, that fish is bigger than Kit. Like weight that, wise, that, that is me. Yeah, weight wise, him. yeah, that's yeah, that minus me. the seven foot. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm only five foot four. Yeah. There you go. It's bigger. That's than him. badass. Man. <laughs> A catfish well, the same size as you. Well. Before that eel tail, they were probably identical copies, and then they just got that eel tail at the bottom. Man, their proportions so weird. Like, really? In the one Sam, because their heads look ginormous. Well, the, some of them did, some of them didn't. Like pictures can do a lot you yeah. know yeah. the one sam caught its head was 25 to 40 percent broader than the one i caught at 123 so that 20 pounds was head yeah pretty much <laughs> pretty well and a little bit of length it was yeah. skinny and this gut was empty the the guide was geeking out on it he's oh. he was like oh that might go 200 and i'm like how? and then we waited and i'm thinking how many of these have you seen <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're we're usually off by like three or four pounds, not sixty. Well, and <laughs> even if you extrapolate the percentages, it's still ways off. Man. Yeah. How's the fight compared to flat? Um, it's different. The it's hard to tell because I I'm I can't remember the last flathead I caught on a surf rod. Oh. That's basically what we're using. You know, they're anywhere from nine to thirteen foot rods with giant spinning reels, hundred pound braid, and uh, but they, their endurance is impressive. Their power is impressive. Their was speed, it high current? No, no, no? current. And they, they'll, they're, they're, they fight hard. Like huh. the, the first big one I got, I went out in the boat because where we were fishing, it was like a hundred to one hundred and fifty yards of eight to ten foot of water, and then it dropped straight down about thirty. It's like a mud feet. flat. Mud flat down a ledge, and you hook one, you got to get them over that ledge yeah. first big one i hooked i guide was like get in the boat so i got in the boat fought it in the boat on this in this like 14 foot john boat <laughs> your <laughs> rods as long as the boat pretty is. much <laughs> and i'm trying to like shove the rod in my gut so i can keep my arms straight and lean on them a little bit and it keeps kind of popping up and stuff and it was less than ideal my forearm was freaking burning and that fight on that gear with pretty decent drag because you couldn't go too heavy on the drag because we're using such little hooks like we're fishing one aught two aught three aught hooks for these fish Weird. really yeah. almost 200 or 150 pound fish probably. yeah wow yeah like stuff i would use for walleyes yeah but he says if you use big hooks they don't eat it okay you know you got to do what you got to do catch yeah. fish but yeah he's the guy it, it limits the amount of drag you want to put on that fish with that small of a hook. But still, with a rod that's that long in a situation like that where you're, you're fighting a fish straight up and down on a 12-foot fishing rod, <laughs> like your forearm is burning by the time yeah. you get it. And you're talking 10, 15-minute fight on these fish Jeez. with gear like that. But he gets under the boat, you could almost see the tip of your rod on the other side of the boat. <laughs> it, it made... I, I had one that tried, that one tried to run under the boat, yeah. and the, the swivel was super awkward, like trying to swivel it around the front. And then also Sam was right there, so that made it more complicated. <laughs> but we got it done. Yeah. He, he grabbed it. He, he pulled it in the boat. And, Hell yeah. Yeah. And then the second one I fought off the bank because I wanted to catch one strictly off the bank. Ooh. Just to feel. Get, Just dig to, your feet in. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I got to do that, and luckily landed him, fought him over the edge of that ledge. And Ran his face into the cliff. 
At least a couple. <laughs> well, he didn't like it because when I did it, he'd bust off about 50 feet long. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'll see you again in five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> that was his demise because when he ran, he, I think he would come up a little higher Yeah, as I wore him out. Then I got him over the top. But they are fit. They don't just cruise on the bottom. You would see them like porpoise at times and the, you'll, or you'll see their tail slap on top of the water. And they're clear up on top in 35 feet of water in the wow. middle of the day. Hmm. They're weird fish. They're they're nothing like any catfish I've ever been around. Really? What, what did you catch it on? What were you using? Like little prepared dough balls. That's it. That's it. Huh. They hit top waters too, don't they? Yeah, I mean, there's those videos yeah. from Italy. That's a different river. That than, almost uh, reminds me of spawn time, though. Like they're throwing it up against a bank. Are they in that bank spawning? And that judges a reaction or makes a reaction. Oh, for the wells? Yes. Maybe. That's the ones I've seen, and that's oh. what I just clicked in my head, that they're in there spawning, and you throw that top water right over the, the top The only thing of them. that makes me not lean towards that is they're traveling a long ways from their babies. If yeah. they spawn, if they're protecting babies. Yeah, that's true. But I'm not sure. I don't know shit about them. Still don't. I don't either. I just know they get big, they fight hard, and maybe I'll go catch them again someday. Yeah, so what's your... Uh, opinion of them now that you've caught them i think they're a badass fish yeah i th i have no knock against the wells catfish worth the trip worth the worth. trip like the fight is because i'd heard that they're kind of sissy fighters pound for pound they are not <laughs> <laughs> they are not. i will be a straight shooter on that i don't i don't think i'm gonna hurt any wells catfish feelings <laughs> no matter what direction i go like yeah. they are Badass fighters. Yeah. I didn't want to hear like, oh, kind of like your alligator guy. You say if you catch one big one, you know, that's probably it, whatever. Oh, you, I, I would go back. Um, I don't know if I'd do it that long. Like like I said, it kind of felt like Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah. and, and we were fortunate we got a big one, a couple big runs by like three days in. So And I know not every trip's like that. To go do it for a couple of days would be plenty. Mm -hmm. Or s go do what we did for a couple of days and switch it up and go for Xander. Or, or you can jig them. That sounds fun. And I imagine doing that with live scope. Oh, dear. Like you drop live scope down and then you have your jig with, they'll put like balls of night crawlers on it or, or even just lures. And they were clonking. You could hear, there was a few boats out in front of us at times. You'd hear them. They have this wooden thing called a clonk and it makes this noise it's it's not a plop per se it's like a weird plop very unique i i can't describe it never heard a sound quite like it. it's just a plop but different mm -hmm. and they would do that and you'd see these i don't know why they don't they would have four guys in the boat fishing one rod why does everybody not have their own <laughs> fishing rod so four guys are watching one rod yeah well in the sonar so <laughs> you have this 16 foot boat one guy's holding a fishing rod a clonk clonking jigging looking at the fish finder everybody else is just glued at the fish finder like hands on the other dude's shoulders peeking over his shoulder <laughs> weird that is weird <laughs> like, why don't why don't you all just have a jigging rod but maybe it's because you know too many lures on the sonar and it's tougher to tease the fish up i don't know but one guy was doing all the work one guy one rod yeah. With four, That's going to be my guide ice fishing trips. <laughs> <laughs> Gather around, children. <laughs> We're going to catch three crappie today. <laughs> Together. <laughs> yes. Together. Teamwork makes the dream work. But if I could go do something where I'm the guy with the fishing rod doing that, that would be badass. <laughs> Or everybody it's has like their teaching, own, and we have a live scope, and it's all fine. It's like teaching <laughs> yeah. preschool. You're like, this is how you do it, boys and girls. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or if you could figure out a way to catch them on top water, that would yeah. be the ultimate top water eat. Dude, that would It'd be, be cool. pretty cool to see a live scope to see the fish. Like, yeah, and, and I rode out in the boat with the the guide. He uh, he had like a hummingbird nine ninety nine. And it still had the little fishy symbols for the fish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you could tell it was a wells, not because of how big the fish were, but you'd, you'd see like nine of them in a line. Because <laughs> oh, they're really? so long. And he's like, oh, yeah. there's, a, there's a wells. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jig him in, Captain. <laughs> it's, it's a different world. And then, so we had a great trip. Uh, caught a bunch of good fish. And then uh, on the way home, I had a brutal flight. Because it was long, you know. Yeah. Well, 
All right, it's not that bad. It's brutal. Brutal. After <laughs> after the week that yeah. you went through. But the the thing that was annoying about that is when the flight was booked, it was originally from Barcelona to Chicago, Chicago to Des Moines. Great. They canceled the Chicago to Des Moines flight. Yay. And rerouted us Chicago like, to good luck. Dallas. <laughs> Dallas to Des Moines. And uh, we we wake up at three in the morning because Barcelona is huge. It's like five and a half million people. You want to get to that airport three hours early. Will's flight was at nine. We had to be there at six. We left Caspe at 3 a.m. And to go through all the BS. And once we get there, we got through customs and everything just fine. Long, long wait for our flight at like nine or 1130 hop on the plane, go through all that stuff, get home. I'm waiting for my baggage. Oh, oh no. Shit. <laughs> they changed the gate in Dallas like three times. And when that happened, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so it wasn't enough that they lost my rod tube on the way there. They had to lose my other bag on the way back. With all the rods. And, With all the reels uh, and the all reels. the other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like 1230 in the morning. I woke up at 3 a.m. in Spain and then... Not all, uh, there's seven time zone difference, so it, it's not like 3 a.m. to 3 a.m. difference, it's 3 a.m. to 12 30 plus seven more hours. So it's I've been <laughs> up for like 30 some hours straight. Well, and then kinda. Get kicked in the nuts, yeah, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, so can't find my baggage, can't like there's no Ubers around. Elle is asleep, and she had to run them. A half marathon the next day, so I'm not going to wake her up. Yeah, <laughs> I will walk before yeah, I wake right, up. Right, right. You're I a little guess. closer now. Right. <laughs> Ended up getting a taxi. It wasn't a, that big of a deal. The happy ending on the luggage. Next day, Elle and I celebrate us being back together. We go to breakfast. On our way back from breakfast, I'm like, Drop. after her run. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So and, she garb load now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I should have said brunch. Yeah. It was at like noon and we ate breakfast food. <laughs> well, I didn't wake up till 11, 11 30. You know? <laughs> After we ate brunch, she dropped me off at the airport when she went and got groceries. And I go up to the American Airlines, whatever baggage claim service thing, and hand them my tag. And they're like, oh, well. A plane from Dallas just showed up about five minutes ago. It'll be on the belt anytime, any moment. Oh! So I walk over to the belt. Ten minutes later, there it is. There it is. I have my bag. <laughs> rod tubes. Now have you seen any rods? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The crappy part of that is, so we, we flew American from Spain back to Des Moines, every single flight. On the way there, the first flight was American, but the second two were with Iberia. And I don't know where they're based out of. I don't know anything about Not them. local. Not local. <laughs> so I got to figure that out. So I'll be giving them a call and hopefully they can understand my poor English. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the that's the rundown of all Spain that I can think of. I'm sure we'll be talking and then something else will pop up yeah. in my head. So as far as your overseas out of U.S. trips, how's it rate? Uh, like fishing success? Just overall. How do you feel it, like versus the Amazon or versus? I don't know if I'll ever go back to Spain. I might. I will go back to the Amazon every year. If I, yeah. can, if yeah. I can make it happen. Like financially feasible, which I'm hoping to continue to work out ways to make it more financially feasible. But I'll be going back to the Amazon in November and then March. <laughs> <laughs> but you caught two fish over 100 pounds yeah. in Spain. Yeah. And you've yet to see a triple digit fish in the Amazon. In person. So what takes you back to the Amazon? Possibility and then the variety. Yeah. You can catch so much. Like catfish and was not good when I was in the Amazon last time. Caught some cats and didn't get a big yeah. one. Piled up peacock bass. They were so much fun. Caught an arapaima. That was badass. Caught payara. Got on a great 
vampire fish bite and they fight like nothing I've ever hooked in my entire freaking life. <laughs> they, and then you bring them up. You're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to touch that? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it's going to jump out and bite me in the neck. You know? <laughs> like, um, and then I don't know. I hooked an Amazon drum. Pound for pound, it was the hardest fighting fish I hooked the entire trip. <laughs> like the guy, every fish we caught, the guy looked at it like, eh, you know, it's another fish. I brought that, dr- when that drum, it jumped. Jumped clear out of the water, walked on its tail. Looks just like a freshwater drum here, damn near. <laughs> and pulled like crazy. And as soon as it came out of the water, he lose, like lost his mind. Ooh, get down the boat, in the boat, in the boat. <laughs> like, like, this is the thing. Patience. Like, like, I, like, I just caught a 200 pound arapaima yesterday. You didn't say shit. And I, <laughs> I hooked this drum, and you're losing like your mind. <laughs> there has to be something else to it, but. I mean, there's just so many cool things. And then the scenery, like in the critters, granted, a lot of them will kill you, but they, <laughs> but they look cool, you know, you know, and I don't know. I just talking about the Spain trip. It was awesome. As soon as you bring up the Amazon, I just light yeah. up because it's just such a cool place. It's rugged. You know, the accommodations in Spain were a lot nicer. You'd wake up in the morning, go fishing, come back, take a, a nice hot shower, eat go out and eat or we cooked food a bunch of nights so we had grills uh, and then you had a bed like yeah. a real bed to lay on. <laughs> yeah you go to the amazon not a cabin with no windows sleeping in a tent we had air mattresses <laughs> and by the end of the day you were so damn tired like that air mattress yeah, was, was the nicest it was mattress like my I ever whole june <laughs> yeah exactly. i sleep on a on an air mattress exactly or, uh, but the amazon's something special and i've only been to one part of it Mm. Yeah. Who's to say there aren't better places? I'm sure there's yeah. worse. I'm going to go try a different place in, in March. But, uh, and that'll have less variety. But it has the one more of what I really want to yeah. catch. Yeah. Is there any spots in Iowa you haven't tried or fish? Where? Any spots of, uh, in Iowa that oh, you've yeah. never tried that you want to try? Oh, uh, like northwest Iowa. I'd like to get up there some more. Okay. Been to Northeast Iowa a fair amount, and I'll I'm going to be there this weekend. Actually, there go. won't be fishing very much. I'll probably sneak out in the mornings a little bit. But Northwest Iowa, I haven't fished very much, and then uh, Southeast Iowa, I haven't fished very much. Okay. But I need to. It's yeah. hard to go to the Mississippi, and then not just keep driving to St. Louis, which is what I've always done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got good people down there that you know well and fish yeah. with, and, yep. and you've had good success down there. So, and I don't really know personally know very many people on the east side of the state other than Troy and Amy. Yeah, at least not in Nate Marlin a little bit. Troy and Amy would be fun to go fishing their style on their river. Oh yeah, but when they said, "Oh, it's kind of low," you know, it's six foot. And that's their average depth. Well, <laughs> and we're, we're like six foot. That's a hell of a hole. <laughs> the the one of the stretches that they float the most that they're they're probably talking about the holes. Like yeah, it, it's yeah, it's smaller than the, the our one of our local rivers. Well, the one really? one of the ones that we fish a bunch. Yeah, like or at least comparable on yeah. that, that particular part of it. I don't but, know if you could even kayak but, very far on ours right now without getting stuck. No, yeah. it's it's been we've proven that <laughs> our last trip out, mm-hmm. but scary. it paid off. It's and getting it, worse. It's like it's it, really low. it's scary bad. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. scary. With scary. winter coming, it's scary bad. Catfish will be fine. I I think so because most spots that I've found them lately, they're at least a ten foot section mm-hmm. where they can hide out. Yeah, you guys are still getting your boats out there though, right? And we're gonna very find small out. sections. <laughs> well, there's there's yeah. In very okay. small sections. I've actually overpressured an area because that's one of the only it's literally the closest spot to my house that I can get my boat in the water mm-hmm. and it's forty five minutes away. Oh. Yep. I mean it's that's it. You know, I was thinking maybe that's why where we went this past weekend, the lake we were fishing was about what, a foot maybe about a foot lower. Or more. It was like six foot lower. Oh, like six foot lower. We were standing. Oh, yeah, you're right. And mind. the water line where it normally was was above my head. Yeah. 
You're right. Never mind. Six foot lower. So at least I'm four not, and a half foot lower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that tall. Yeah. Yes, you're right. But the water line was above my head. So we were struggling the first day and a half. But they lowered uh-huh. the lake on purpose, though. Yes. Because they, the, the they had to work on the dam. But and, we didn't know uh, that. We had no idea. And it, That's hard to anticipate because it's not like you're paying attention to the local news. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. But the funny thing is, it was a good idea. Kit made the decision, you know what, let's just hit the spillway. Because my brother-in-law said he saw some wa- they were letting out water. Right. So Kit was like, you know what, we are still sh- can't catch shit. Like, we're sucking. Let's just go hit the spillway and see what's up. When in doubt. When in doubt. Hit spillway the spillway with green worms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and At least we, the first part. We, we got there, and we're like, what? The, the water was flowing, and it was higher than it was previously when we went there before. And then this is the thing. I casted a spoon, you know. I got a bite, a real bite. Of course, this guy goes... Whatever it was, in you, a you bite. gotta take it. Uh, you gotta take it with a grain of salt when this guy says See, he gets here, a bite. Here we go again. Uh, <laughs> That's my brother. Are you sure? <laughs> my brother lost said the same thing. He goes, I would believe his ass if he said he got a bite. Did you get? <laughs> what the hell? Did you hook up on the fish? No, it was a bite. And he, he had did. a spoon with a treble hook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's why everybody's like, whatever. Three, dude. three points of contact yeah. to actually hook the fish that yeah. sp- bit. <laughs> that's pretty much what Kit was like, whatever, dude. He goes, are you sure? <laughs> you sure that just wasn't the wall that you hit? You know, you whatever. <laughs> and then I finally, I think like two or three casts right after that, finally hit a, it was probably like a four, four and a half pound wiper. Mm-hmm. And then Kit was like, oh, I guess that was probably. Like, there are bite. fish in <laughs> here. There are fish in here. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I just told you I had a bite. But, dude, that night, all of a sudden, it just clicked there because we were like, we caught probably between me and him six, seven wipers. Mm-hmm. And then I caught uh, like maybe another four, maybe white bass we caught. And then that's when he caught his striper. It was probably within what, an hour? Maybe yeah, we two. got there late. Yeah. yeah. So we had about an hour, hour, an hour and a half because he caught that striper. When it was pitch black darker, right? yeah, and we're like, well, that's one thing about stripers more so than hybrids. They're not like averse to eating at night. You can catch hybrids off. at nights, but there's like a big night fishing striper culture, mm-hmm. especially for targeting big fish. Mm-hmm. Could have to do that more often, but it was the thing. Man, he went down. This was his goal. He wanted to catch a striper. Didn't think he was going to catch one that. This whole trip, he was actually struggling. This is the first time I think the first day I was actually out fishing him. A oh, bit. a little whoa. bit, a little bit. Whoa. Fighting words. <laughs> it was early. I was gonna say, wow, well, Kit, you must have <laughs> really sucked. Well, <laughs> <laughs> because you and my brother-in-law, he was like, man, I've never seen Kit so frustrated. He was walking around. He didn't know what to do. He was casting all kinds of stuff. He just couldn't catch. But then, yeah, obviously he. he when Kit sets a goal, he's yeah. gonna get he his goal. Up. He woke up. <laughs> That's it. Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. yeah, I was struggling that first. The first day we got there and that first morning, it it was rough. Were you blue cat fishing too, or no? no. But that lake has big channels. Oh, big. Got gotcha. you. Thirty plus inches isn't uncommon. <clears throat> I don't think. No. no. Did you, were you targeting them, or is it just mainly wipers and stripers and stuff? It's like mainly that? just white bass and hybrids we were targeting. Yeah. Actually, I'm, my my plan was to hit up another lake where they actually actively stock those stripers. But I didn't bring my kayak. I uh, I don't know. I was just like, I didn't want to bring my kayak. I lost my hitch pin, so I didn't bring my kayak carrier. I was like, ah, whatever. Because I was going straight from work. I didn't want to have to go to the hardware store, grab it, run back home. Oh, I get it. Yeah. And then I just got freaking suicide stripe, stripe bass because <laughs> I was just burning... I was just burning my uh, re- uh, my lure in because that little spillway, if you don't get bit within the first 10 seconds. Snagged. Or nothing would happen. Nothing, oh. nothing no. would happen. So I just cast in the tube. Okay, it's been tex- 10 seconds. Nothing. I'm just burning it in. And then <laughs> He's like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, and then that striper <laughs> smacks it. Yeah. And yeah. 20 pound striper. That's, That's cool. badass. Yeah. That was nice. Especially being this close to Iowa. Oh, yeah. 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 I think the closest I've caught a striper to Iowa is like 12 hours away. (laughs) Texoma? Yeah, this was... I didn't catch one down there. No, but... 
You you got uh, a few. No, I didn't. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. But I was thinking the bigger one that Spud caught. Well, that would be eleven hours away. A yeah. whole lot closer. <laughs> <laughs> this well, place is Tennessee. five, five yeah. and a half. Yeah, yeah. Five, five, half. Hours, yeah. five hours. Five and a half. Yeah, yeah I forgot I get in some stripers that mm -hmm. day. That's one thing, the stripers too. Hybrids will hit cut bait, but the stripers lots of times seem to prefer it. Yeah. All the stripers I caught in Florida were on cut bait. Really? You know, if okay. I wanted big blues, I used big chunks of shad. If I wanted small blues, occasionally a big one would eat it. But uh, in stripers and wipers, you just use small chunks. Off the bottom? Off the bottom. Hmm. Huh. Okay. I'd throw them on those little catfishing carp spinning rods and... Wouldn't even have to really be paying that much attention because you'd hear the drag zip. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> then once in a while you'd see the tip touch the water and you're like, oh, the wrong fish got it. <laughs> well, I think the biggest blue we caught on one of them was like 27 or 29. Uh, wow. They're, they're so fun. That was a battle. Yeah, yeah. I bet, especially after the initial contact. You're oh, like, oh, that rod's going to break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fun part about it is, well, you had a real possibility of getting spooled, but as far as hanging up on structure, there wasn't really anything to hang up on. Any of the places the blue cats and stripers consistently occupied, most of it was 20 to, well, it ranged 20 to like 45 feet, but it was all scattered rock on the bottom. Yeah. You know, you can fight them above that stuff, no problem, even on light gear. Just take How big bottom. a rock? Like, were the big fish near, like... Volkswagen size? <laughs> <laughs> no, most of it was probably basketball size or smaller. Yeah? Yeah. Just I mean, enough that, to make a that, current that, break? And... Well, I, I don't even know about that. I think sometimes, usually, usually it was on an edge. But if you have a drop-off or a rise, that's going to create a current break underwater. And that's what, that was the learning curve for me, because I would see a current break on top of the water, that doesn't and they're always... 45 foot below oh, right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and but flatheads would relate to that yeah you know i'm an or channels i was in the flathead channel mindset you got to break away from that for the big river blue cats because you on the surface you're just fishing straight line current underwater you got that drop off or that that rise that's going to create that current seam and that's where they're hanging out hmm. that was a big that makes sense it was a big epiphany yeah. moment i for bet me. yeah Thanks for sharing. Yep, you're welcome. <laughs> Wheels are turning. Like, not relatable to our waters, no. but... No, I take some trips. <laughs> it's not, not so much relatable to a lake, but any big river. A blue cat's a blue cat. You know, you have yes. underwater current break. Big rivers, like the Mississippi or Missouri, are a little different because you have those giant wing dams that literally stick out and above. Yes. Those create a different kind of break. Yeah. And fish relate to those, but then you have, say, a weir dike which is basically an underwater, fully submerged wing dam that doesn't stick out necessarily all that high, but it's used to di di divert current through chutes and stuff, and big blue cats will relate to that. And if you're good at bumping... And almost more so, because oh, absolutely. you get a boil at the top, but the you, actual... A lot of them you won't even see a boil. Won't even see? Yeah, I mean, you're talking a rise that's a rise of 5 to 10 feet, 45 feet under the water you you you'll see a minor disturbance and usually it's a ways down river from the weird dike it actually huh. is if you see anything at all yeah yeah so that's good info to have yeah that's just that's, dropping all kinds that's of what the old boys today. had up on you they were like i knew that was there 40 yeah. years ago well maybe like if you didn't have sonar or mapping you would yeah. never know it's there yeah until that would you be pile up the fish in one spot over and over and over. But then you never know why. <laughs> no. You'd be like, why are they here and not anywhere else? It's a mystery, you know. You just got lucky and found that spot. <laughs> yeah. Now with sonar, you're driving over and you're like, why is, why is that rise? And why is it showing red on the sonar? Then you go through on side imaging and down scan. You're like, oh, that's a, that's a bunch of rock underwater. <laughs> How about that? And, that, and they even have a, a lot of them marked on the map it. Yeah. So. Fish here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love those maps. <laughs> it does take a little of the mystery out of it. Which is okay. Yeah. You get too much mystery, you get frustrated. <laughs> uh, on new water, and I can't say anything. There's like small streams, there's not much mystery. You don't even need a depth finder, really. You could catch a pile of fish without a depth finder. Yes. As long as you can read current. You just read find a system that works. Yeah. And that system will play any where you go. 
One last question before we get to the last cast, just because I want to hear your thoughts. Have you ever seen anybody walking around wearing an Under Armour fishing hat and like the button up uh, fishing shirts and like AFCO shorts, but they don't actually fish? I don't know what that stuff is. <laughs> oh, you fish. I'm, 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 I'm trying to picture it. Hold on, hold on. This, the button. This is what I wear all the time. <laughs> if it's not cargo shorts and a t-shirt that my girlfriend bought me, I don't own it. So, so the button-up shirt would be like the ones with the collar. The yeah. Button-up, long sleeve. They're kind of baggy. They got vents on them. Lots of them. They're, well, for the for the lats and traps. <laughs> I mean, you got to let them. But breathe. they're not. They're not good because they're not stretchy. Yeah. Like if you have big shoulders, they kind of suck unless you get the neck size up, and then you feel like a pirate. You know, like. <laughs> At least you're not a midget pirate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a joke at Kit? No, that's a <laughs> joke in <at> your dream. <laughs> um, so I, I always think of them as kind of like posers. I feel like golfers would wear that stuff. I, I can see a golfer wearing that that type of attire. I've seen people who pretend their golfers wear golfing attire. Yeah. So fishing, I could probably see it. I, I would say maybe more of the fly fishing gear. I've seen people who... I but the was, fly fishing gear is like business casual. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's. Yeah. I still go back to the girlfriend thing because that's what I wear. So I'm sure that's <laughs> who bought it for them. They're like, I wish you were an outdoorsman. Here's oh, this stuff. <laughs> I never thought of that. Uh, I don't that know. Could, you know what? That could be. It. I don't know. Somebody bought it for them. Their significant other. Think that would look good on them. But they, I mean, every field has people that wear it that don't do it. I mean, the biggest is cowboys. Of oh yeah. yeah, you know wranglers and cowboy hat, and they couldn't tie their shoe, let alone fucking ride it <laughs> the bowl. So well, that's why they wear cowboy boots. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you did yeah. there. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. So I mean, everything's gonna have somebody trying to pose. You have, know, have you gone to somebody and started talking fishing to them? They're like, I don't fish, sir. Yeah, actually, I did. It was on a vacation when I was in high school. And- Shockingly expensive. Yeah. Yeah. He's like every other person I talked to. <laughs> it, was, it was on a pier. There was people fishing. They were all wearing this type of apparel, like the buffs, the fishing hat, the, the long sleeve button-up collared shirts that were baggy and ventilated and then, you know, AFCO or SIM shorts or whatever and flip-flops. And then there were some other dudes walking off the pier and i was like hey you guys is anybody catching anything today and they're like we don't really fish bro see ya <laughs> <laughs> like you dress just like everybody else like you're ready for a day on the water yeah. you know well is they it, were kind of yeah they kinda. just had a nice picnic at the, on the pier and yeah going home <laughs> They kind of like the salt life stickers that I see. That was the first thing I thought of. Yeah. It's like people, the state where I see them Kind of like most, a tap out t-shirt. Yes. Back <laughs> well, you don't see those anymore now. You don't see them as much. Tap out isn't regional. You know, like salt life, you think you need salt yeah. water yeah. to be salt yeah. life. The state where I see the most salt life stickers, Kentucky. <laughs> I see a bunch Riddle here. Riddle me that one. Oh, yes. Well, I see a bunch here in Iowa. You do I mean, really? Well, I mean, somebody goes on vacation to Florida. They go to a gift shop, and they're like, "Oh, oh. this sticker looks cool. Let's slap it on our vehicle." We love Florida. This all live. Blah, 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 blah. I'm sure. I'm sure everyone. It's not in, what that means. I'm sure everyone in Kentucky feels it's the same way. But why Kentucky? <laughs> Kentucky and Florida. Oh, Florida friggin'. makes sense. What is Florida? Would make sense. Me. Yes. Woody goosed you over yeah. there. <laughs> Came over and started licking my my freaking fingers. <laughs> <laughs> He's been known to do that. Now you're gonna have poison ivy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah. Better watch where I put my hands tonight. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> I think that's a great segue to the last <laughs> cast. Uh, last cast is your opportunity to talk about whatever the hell you want, and we will start with Grandy and not Kit after that last comment. <laughs> right. <laughs> or Ryan if Grandy doesn't. No, Grandy's got it. He's always on the ball. I guess. Uh, fall bite, man. I'm excited. I think uh, I'm going to be able to get out a little bit more. So hopefully I can catch some uh, walleyes. It's going to be my goal this year. Catch some. Yeah. Uh, I want to catch a... I'll be after him. Let me know. Yeah, okay. the temp's dropping. For sure. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, catch some 
good. I want to catch a PB walleye. Would be nice. Me too. Doesn't everybody? My, mine's not, my, but mine's not too I mean, big. Doesn't everybody? Yeah. Everybody well, like, want to catch? I want to catch the biggest well, fish well, I possibly. That's our goal every time. walleye, I'm well. like, I just want some eaters. I just want five. For yeah. me, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, I just want to. So my PB walleye is not even that big. It's like twenty, I think six and a half. That's pretty big. That's, that's a good river that's pretty walleye good. for around here. It was in Nebraska. It wasn't even here. Oh. So. The odds. I mean, it's, the odds are still there. I can catch them. That that would be my goal for fall. Obviously, I am looking forward to ice. I, I don't know, man. For some reason this year, I, the past like two or three years, I was not looking forward to ice fishing. Like, I mean, I was like, whatever. Me it becomes either. A, well, this year I am. <laughs> this year I am, I think. Uh, well, last year you kind of got your kids involved, and they yes, kind of love it. They love it. So, and then I think we did really good last year, too. I did really good on the ice last year, so I'm like, that's super so I can't wait for the ice a little bit. And um, hopefully you can catch some wipers through the ice. Hell yeah. Catfish. Catfish through the ice. Hell yeah. And that's the, that's my, honestly, man, that's my goal. I'm excited. Get a little bit more fishing. Then hopefully Fishing Kid gets his boat that he keeps talking about. And he can take me out. Whoa, it's hard drag? to take a boat on the ice. Yeah. Well, yeah. well I mean, for, next, <laughs> for next year, I'm just saying. It's a sa- it should be on sale, right? I <laughs> wish it worked that way. Absolutely. <laughs> well, it kind of does. If you want to get a used boat, now's the time to start now's, looking. Now's That's true. The time. Yeah, very true. But no, I just want to thank you guys. Um, we did your podcast a couple weeks ago, and like we talked about, we always have a blast when we get together. So. I appreciate you guys coming kind of last minute and and hooking us up because I got no content for Friday and it's still due at five <laughs> a.m. no matter what. Okay. So I appreciate it, but no, I, the flathead season's kind of winding down. I've got a trip this Saturday and then next Wednesday are my last two flathead trips, and I've actually rotated my hours. We're going to go a little bit earlier, try to get a little day bite, which has been more consistent lately. So, I'm excited to get those two, and then I head to Kansas for uh, three trips on a weekend. So, I'm excited to go down there and and get some blue cat. I haven't fished with blue cat since last, well, probably March. I think it's the last trip we went on. Yeah, I love going down there. Yeah, it's it's good time. So, just kind of end the year, you know, hopefully I bang out a couple nice flathead and then get some big blues. And then, you know, I'm going to trap for a little bit. I'm not going to trap super hard this year because prices are in the garbage. And I've kind of got a handle on a lot of the local fur bears. So I really don't have any farmers that are really pressed with beaver issues or river otter issues. So I'm going to kind of take it easy on trapping this year and hopefully guide some ice fishing trips this, this winter if the good Lord giveth some ice. (laughs) because <laughs> in iowa you never know very <laughs> true very true if not we'll uh make a trip to the missouri yes absolutely right i'm not saying i'm an expert but i know a million times more than i did this time last year and i'm actually kind of excited about it yeah you, know? you kind of had an awesome summer on the big water and then had a another fun one or last fall in winter had a lot of fun down on the missouri yeah yeah before you headed south south yeah how many more weeks would you guys say for non-flathead people who are possibly targeting flatheads? Depends on what the weather does. It's okay. getting sketchy at this point. No, it's, it's moving. No. It's moving more to a daytime bite because yeah, the, the that's water normal because the water temps are below seventy degrees, and that's kind of the pinnacle of caught cold water. Caught a forty-four last year when the water was fifty-seven. Yeah, hmm. so it's no longer a and four night. of his friends no longer. A- <laughs> So no longer an evening. You can get them soup. at night, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Oh yes, but your odds. You know, it's a cold water. It's a cold water animal. They're when they're, they're ramped up. They're warm water. When they're warmer is what you mean. No, cold blooded is what yeah, I meant. But there's cold water, cold blooded animals. Flatheads are the warmest. That they prefer the warmest water of any of uh, like any fish in Iowa. Metabolism okay. wise. Yeah. Isn't that like the, their optimum the, metabolism is when the water's like 80 degrees. Oh, okay. When everything else is suffocating, they're like, yes, yeah. <laughs> I will eat you. They're easier to catch now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I've never caught a flathead. Like what I consider legit. I don't know why this is a controversial topic with people, but it is 
I've never caught a flathead legitimately other well, I mean if you I've only snagged them when the water's under 50. Okay. I've caught plenty of flatheads inadvertently walleye fishing um or even snagged a few channel cat fishing because I'm assuming I just cast over the top of them the sinker bonks them on the head and they just continue to lay there and then I <laughs> <laughs> then I reel it in and they're snagged but uh I've caught them like 55 56 degree water okay you think that's the limit right I, about right around there i think it varies fish to fish yeah i think you can yeah. absolutely catch a fit, flathead legitimately when the water's below 50 this is speculation because i've never done it but your chances of success so minimal drop okay. drastically under 70 well degrees. now that i think about it i know a few people who've le- i trust them caught them on night crawlers when the water was in the mid 40s in the spring I've heard that in the spring, as and well. the, the and I've got a lot of little ones in the spring on crawlers, but not when the water's forty five. No, these no. were the other thing that is a common thread. I don't know if I want to get too far into this. <laughs> <laughs> Do we not have time? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how much information I want to share. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. This, you're talking like Area Fifty One shit. <laughs> we <Yeah>. are here. <laughs> like there's there's all these broad concepts that. You can apply and catch a flathead, and then you can break it down in these very minute, nuanced details that can really tip your favor one direction or the other. Okay. And for nineteen ninety nine, you can <laughs> <laughs> you can I, hear the next comment. <laughs> I thought I thought about doing a membership thing on through YouTube. Yeah, I remember you talking yeah, about they that. Do that. I might, I might. Not that I'm all like the expert per se, but there's stuff that I know. That there's a lot find. of knowledge that would help a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not everyone's as insane as me and wants to spend all that time out on the water. And I get it. I get it. But, yeah, you got – just depends on what the weather does. Looking at the forecast, you got every bit of two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Yeah, every bit of it. Probably longer. And the low water probably helps us more than anything because they're not hurts. going anywhere. Well, Cause, the, the water temperature thing, though, it fluctuates yeah. so much more where if it that stays warm, it's going to help you. But that first cold front's going to knock them dead. Yeah. It's going to be 30s today. Yeah, the, the next couple no, days. No, but I'm be... talking like a cold front. Okay. Like, like, oh, like highs of 50, oh, yes. low yeah. of 25. Okay, gotcha. You know, going to. That's We're, coming. Yeah. We We're, still got highs of upper 60s, 60s. you know, like yeah. pushing 70. And next weekend's 70. supposed to be 75. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're going to be by. And yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to next Saturday. Mm-hmm. I, I think we may have a great day. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good to hear. Yeah. There you go. Kit, your last cast? Um, I guess I got a couple of things. I'll just <laughs> say thank you for uh, inviting us. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you have a lovely house, by the oh, way. Oh, thank you. Congrats thank you. on the house. Appreciate it. I feel spoiled living here. Did you get a new garage door? Is I, it taller? Did you see the boat parked in the yard? I did not. Because <laughs> it's in the garage. <laughs> 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 that was tonight was the first night. And I took... It got to come home. I took <laughs> probably 15 minutes backing it in. I, back, I saw, saw it. you had a little ramp with the 2 by 4 Yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. some boards yeah. at the yeah. end of your garage. And maybe one of these days I'll build me up a little speed bump. You know, like put some posts in and then build the cement speed bump. If it wasn't $20,000 to pour a new freaking driveway, I'd probably just do that. But We can make you a curb. From your driveway to your... That's what I want yeah, to do. Yeah, just do a curb. Yeah. Yeah. I know some guys. I thought you had a concrete guy here. We had a guy come by and look at it. Oh, okay. And then <laughs> he, he got in a pretty bad accident. Yeah. He's, uh, he had some stuff yeah. happen. Dang. Yeah, he, his, his world took a left turn. Okay. So that's why I didn't make a big deal out of it. Gotcha. Yeah. But hopefully next spring can lower the approach so it doesn't scrape the bottom of my trailer when I back in the driveway. (laughs) It's a little things. Yeah. Well, it's just like every other boat ramp in the state. (laughs) (laughs) River ramp. Yeah. 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 River ramp. Lake ramps aren't bad. Got anything else, Kit? Okay. I guess I got two more things still. (laughs) Uh, I guess I just want to plug my channel real quick. Absolutely. And and your podcast is Beerfish Fanatics. Just as Which is hilarious. You guys need to listen. Yep. Yeah, if I mean it's me and my buddy Grandy, we drink beer, talk fishing, have some cool guests like Ryan and Spencer Did you just on say every now and then. We drink beer. 
Oh, oh, <laughs> that's right. Oh, one of you drinks one seltzers. One of us drinks beer. <laughs> that's just temporarily. <laughs> He's got to get the kinks worked out. I have a feeling yeah. it'll be a reoccurring thing for a while. Yeah, and that's I'm, why I gifted you Trulies. <laughs> I, I might have to switch you, the uh, thumbnails my, back to seltzer oh, fish come fanatics. On, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, dude. I should have got you a get well soon card. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> killing me, killing me, man. Uh, What's it, your YouTube channel name? Uh, fishing Kit. I I remember the first time I searched Fishing Kit on YouTube and your channel did not come up. Mm-hmm. It was just like this Fishing Kit. Like actual like carp fishing, like fishing yeah. kit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Actual fishing kit. Like kits. reviewing the Walmart little kids fishing yes. kit. <laughs> I think... It pops up now. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was going to say, I think I've made some some stride in that regard where if you look me up on YouTube, you should be able to find, mm-hmm. me, find me. But I fish for a lot of the same fish Spencer fishes I for. I mean, we both take advantage of what Iowa has to offer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Excluding, excluding largemouth bass. Yeah, they do have those to offer. <laughs> yeah. And then I guess my my last last cast is I'm really curious about bumping. I've never done it. I've seen you do do it in a few of your videos. Mm-hmm. Have you ever done it, Ryan? Not officially. <laughs> okay. The only time I was on a bumping trip. It there kinda was turned, three of us. It turned into a bumping trip too. Yes. Like we were anchoring. We were out of ideas of what the hell to do. Yeah. But there was three of us, and one was Sam Squatch, and one was Spencer. <laughs> it wasn't ideal. There was, really wasn't a, a bumping spot for me, so I did the side rods, mm-hmm. and I was unsuccessful. So what, <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing when you're bumping? It's something I really want to do. Well, the fact that you It is for, walleye fishing downstream. You took the words out of my yeah. mouth. Considering you do a lot of that. You'll probably pick it up really quick. Mm. It's all holding the rod, feeling the sinker hit the bottom, and letting the current carry it away. And the boat's floating down the river, The boat's too? moving down river. Okay. You're slower than the current. Right. So, uh, like, when I was, last time I did it, the boat was going anywhere from 0.8 to 1.8 miles an hour, like, because current speeds up, slows down. So how are you and slowing And rule of thumb, you want to cut the current in half. We, I went even more, yeah, and yeah. that was more effective. But it's just like anything else. You know, use a bigger jig head, a lighter jig head. That might work better this day versus that day. You can play around with those things. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. But the, the general idea is you want your sinker to be a ways pa- down past the boat. Like, it's not right under the boat. Gotcha. Like, I have an unofficial goal in my mind that I've never accomplished, but I want to bump all the line off of my reel <laughs> and then hook a and fish that's at, when the hundred hits and, yeah. hook, <laughs> tink, and hook a fish See at ya. the knot and i tie better knots on the spool than you do so, <laughs> and then feel this monster by the way i read lined every one of my poles thank, and i made sure the knot was thank, thank goodness did you switch to braid no, <laughs> <laughs> no. just mainly because i won't get him that gratification <laughs> that's the main reason but hook that hundred pounder at the knot, get those three turns on real quick, and then battle them all the way to the boat. Oh. And the glorious, all the glory of having 200 when, yards of line out. Behind and when the, the camera's not on, he's going to be on his remote for the <laughs> for the trolling oh, motor. Uh, no, running back to get him. Well, that'll be that's that's part of the story in my mind. Like not chasing him, but turning it off because you're not you don't want to chase him like yeah. that unless you got somebody else driving the boat and you can run to the front. And I got that bimini top that I love and hate at the same time. Yeah. Then you got to, you'd have to go around that. Is that how you slow down with the trolling motor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got the trolling motor in the water, and you're fiddling with that the whole time. Like I call it playing the drum set when Jason does it because he's a he's the guy who guides in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. He does this. He's every, like a magician. He is. It's amazing. <laughs> like he'll be running the trolling motor. He'll have one or two side rods, and he'll be bumping in his other hand just. <laughs> oh, let line out and just yeah, yeah. and hook, I, hook I and think fish, hours rods to hours go by and he doesn't even realize anything in the universe. It's amazing because he's just in his world. Hmm. And meanwhile, me, I I just like one bumping rod and one trolling motor remote. Like that, that's <laughs> plenty. It gets in the way of me drinking beer, so that's a problem. I know that's that's the main downfall of bumping. Well, if I you found. got somebody else running the boat, you can. 
you know, one hand, one hand. <laughs> they're, not, they're not occupied. But when you that trolling ro- motor remote kind of puts a kink in that. Hmm. But it's really fun. You, I'm sure you would really, really, really like it. But you'll have to buy a boat. Right. <laughs> With a good yes. trolling motor. Oh, yeah. Like, you could have a piece of shit boat and a good trolling motor, and you'll be fine. Wait, good as in you talking about... Like a Taroba like a, or something but like that. But like an 80-pound thrust 80 minimum. Pound. Depends Probably. on how big your boat is. Or the ri- how big the river is. Okay. I mean, if you were on... Because you're not going to bump the raccoon. Dude, you could bump local for channels 100%. Hmm. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, do people yeah. really do it around here? Catfish and carp bait casting rod is the ideal channel cat bumpy rod. It's, That'd be good practice too. Yes. Now every well, actually, it's more difficult than the blue cats because less current. Everything has yes. to be downsized so much. Yeah. So you're they, bumping a half ounce. Yeah, literally bumping a half ounce. Like Troy and Amy do it. It sounds. Why, so why have I not thought of this yet? <laughs> you're not very smart. I, so. Well, there is that. <laughs> I mean, other than the obvious. Hmm. Because but, I I want to get proficient because it's a way to catch big fish. Yeah. So I want to get proficient at it, but I've never had the experience to do that. Right. Now I do. Yeah. You, well, the other side of it, too, is like waterway to catch channels. The best one in central Iowa is, isn't very close to you. It's like two hours away. Yeah. And then the Missouri River is probably about two, two, two and a half hours away. Yeah. So you could go either one and you could catch channels or you could go have a shot at blues. Yes. That's a no brainer. I'm going to the big water. <laughs> and that's the same that's the same. If it wasn't for my buddies that are huge into ice fishing and want to travel three hours north, mm-hmm. I'd go five hours south and catch catfish instead of go ice fishing. Sure. Yeah. But Just it ain't always about the fish. It's not. Yeah. It's not. Right. And I have a great time every trip I take. So but Yeah, if you get a chance to go bumping, like whether it's with me or with somebody else, like absolutely jump on it. Yeah, because I love catching catfish. I mean, I've dragged baits, trolled for them, and, suspended in river channels, but I've never bumped for them. Honestly, the bumping rod makes a big difference. Mm-hmm. It's not 100% necessary. The Whisker Seeker medium heavies are sensitive enough. They have enough carbon in them or you they can you still can feel, feel that thump. It's not as pronounced as the bumping rod, mm-hmm. but if you don't want, like if you don't anticipate yourself doing it a lot and you don't want to drop the money on the bumping rod you could get away with it but that's kind of the difference between making a good walleye guy into a great walleye guy is a good rod that you can feel yeah yeah you know i mean it's kind of the same scenario similar concept it doesn't apply as much to walleye it's because you can get a pretty you could buy a berkeley lightning rod for freaking 35 bucks (laughs) but and they're pretty sensitive to be precise to feel that thump, 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 it takes a pretty good rod. Yeah, because I I, I bought I, I upgraded I don't want my jigs hopping off the bottom. Most of the situations I'm at, I want them floating over the bottom, and that just that takes skill more so than the feel of the rod. Yeah, Is but you good? don't know you're on the bottom unless you feel it. And right. I, until I upgraded my rod the last time, well, you I really couldn't feel that. You're talking the difference between like. You're using fiberglass when we were fishing, mm-hmm. and then you go to graphite. That's a mm-hmm. big jump. Now, mm-hmm. the difference between the— It was like night and day. Oh, absolutely. And I didn't know how you caught a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Just forehead first. I still Sooner don't. or later, I'm going to catch I mean, one. I guess that applies to everything. I don't know how you catch anything. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't have to. I got people to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Grandy <laughs> understands. Hey. <laughs> I'm not the only one bagging on you. Now. I don't feel like such a bully anymore. But yeah, the 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 difference between the bump and rod and the conventional whisker seekers is not as big of a leap as going from a fiberglass to graphite rod walleye fishing. Like yeah. there, there's enough, and S glass is a pretty pretty sensitive type of fiberglass compared to like E glass or I don't remember what the other ones are. But yeah, it's moral of the story: bumping is fun. Go use whatever kind of equipment you have. Yeah, start you make, out. You can make it work. All right. 
Sounds like a plan. But the Whisker Seeker bumping rods are pretty bad. They're badass. Yeah, <laughs> they weigh like seven ounces. Yeah, oh. and if you want to do it for hours at a time, that's the way to go. That's that is the thing you want to talk about your elbow getting sore. Like if you were to use a big beefy fiberglass catfishing rod, and you were good enough to still feel the bottom, they weigh twice, like three times as much as the bumping rod. And if you do it for ten hours straight. Your elbow there's will gonna be, feel it. Yeah. There's going to be a difference. Yeah. What about real? I'm a, a fan of low pros. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've Just seen you use for that. the gear ratio, right? Gear to ratio. catch up. Well, no, the gear ratio, 100, percent but not just that. They're, they just fit in your hand a little nicer. If you're holding them in your hand all day, you know, you could absolutely use a round reel, but you want a high gear ratio. Just because mm -hmm. there's some people who get fixated, like I need a low pro, but they get a low profile that's like a five three to one gear ratio. Can you catch fish? Yes. Are you going to miss fish? Absolutely. And it also depends on the waterway. Like some rivers that you bump on have a ton of current. And when those fish hit, they crush a bait and it don't matter. It don't, <laughs> 209s will <laughs> suffice. Yeah. <laughs> but you go down on the Mississippi and like when the water's low, there's not that much current. And a lot of the fish that hit come at you instead of down river and you got to catch up with them. And that's 731 or actually it's minus seven three it might be higher than that it might be seven eight one hmm. yeah i'm gonna have to look at that stuff no it's a seven three one because my citrix was a six three one great reel the okuma at seven three one it's amazing how much more line you pack on that thing and it's a bigger spool yeah so it's like half a crank of the the reel handle and you're picking up two feet of line it feels like so. Which at that point is very important. Yeah. And they're, they're expensive reels, but you can be a tight ass like me, hold on to your money. And when they go on sale, that's when you get them. <laughs> that's me. Exactly. Yeah. Me. Yeah. 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 Any, anytime I see a cold water for $99, I buy at Bam. least one. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's safe to yeah. 20 bucks and I'm going to use it. It right. took me <laughs> two years before I bought a Komodo. Like I sat, yeah. like I would check them periodically for two years before I finally pulled the trigger. Wow, yeah. there you go. Oh. But right. that's kind of Spencer. That's the way Spencer's mind works. Oh, yeah. He's always two years ahead of where he wants to be. <laughs> well. Truthfully. I mean, you've always, you know what your goals from now to two years I, I try mind. to look ahead on trends. And I'm going to be, like, changing how I do some stuff just because of how things are trending. And that, now, whether I'm right or wrong, and, we'll see. And that doesn't always <laughs> mean, like, buying stuff. But that means, like, his fishing technique. He's always like, this is where I want to be this far ahead. So this is how I'm going to get there. Hmm. I try to be. Yeah. yeah. So far, it's not working bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep what you're doing. I do... Wonder. If the Cubs would do that, they'd no be shit. further ahead. <laughs> I don't want this to turn into a giant bitch fest. <laughs> well, I, I have zero clout in baseball. We're, we're going to watch it once I'm going to do my last cast, and then I'll bitch about the Cubs later. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to support the podcast, Waterlay and Sunglasses, promo code RC15 gives us a little kickback, helps us out. You get badass sunglasses. Bigfoot Bushcraft, probably, like, I love my Waterlands, and I love... The fact I have a promo code with them, but if I had they to, don't keep you warm, right? Right. <laughs> if I had to, like, what's my favorite this promo time of code year? Deal? Yeah, like, yeah, this those time of year starters, is the bushcraft. They are yeah. sweet, and it's like, yeah, you could do the whole petroleum jelly thing, but they're messy and whatnot. And these ones you can throw in a Ziploc baggie, and they're just there. Yeah, they get wet, doesn't matter. It yeah. really, like, you can you could pack slushy snow in your Ziploc with these things pull one out and they still start a fire <laughs> they're freaking nuts they're spencer proof they are <laughs> and uh yeah that that's saying a lot right there but uh an, oh another thing reviews if you that helps a lot as far as promoting the podcast leave a review on itunes yeah. and whatever other platform you can leave a review i'm not very good at it but if you would be that that would be greatly appreciated. And if you guys want to share it I mean, tag us in it, share yeah. it. You know, it, I Absolutely. love seeing people all around the nation sharing it's our stuff. It's pretty neat. It is. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. So thank you to everyone who does, and thank you to everyone who does in the future. It means a ton. But that's all I can think of. You guys got anything else? Uh, tune in to BFF, yes. your fish fanatics. You guys are going to have a blast listening to them. They have, they have some good good content, and they have fun. You know, if, if you like our podcast you'll definitely like theirs so 
Tune in. In the same vein. That's why we get along. Yeah. Don't, don't sure. take anything too serious. <laughs> no, no, no. No. Especially me. You can be as serious yeah. as you want, but don't take it too serious. Grandy's used to be in a punchy bag. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll continue that once I hit the button. Thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you catch a giant. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. All right. See ya. <laughs>